or later. So why don't we uh, call the meeting to order? Don, are you ready? Or? Yeah. Let's we'll say the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks. Okay, uh, well, first we have some mail here, right? Yeah. Uh, we'll, go a lot, the, we'll, some. we'll go through the uh, mail, and we have this. Don, he had emailed us this agreement on maintaining roads, which is the Wilson Lake estates, and run between Russell County and Lincoln County back in 2014. And I'll give a copy. He printed us a copy for us, too. And we asked last week about, uh, there's four of them here. Do you want one, Don? Uh, I gave her yeah. one. Yeah. I've Once had one already. You have. Okay. Well, Alexis, so, well, there's an extra You can one. give one to Brendan or somebody. Brendan, Brendan, yeah. Okay, Brendan. thing I did was uh, Don emailed us the agreement back in 2014 between Wilson Lake, between Russell County and Lincoln County on how to deal with some of the lake roads. Do you have that copy? Yes, I think it was 2015 and it basically said it was going to continue unless it was given written notice for cancellation, the way I read it. Right, I kind of read it that way too. Mm-hmm. Do you... You want to, I can read it here. It's not very big for the. Sure. I'll read sure. this agreement back in. It says it was adopted the third day of November 2014, is what my copy says. But anyway, agreement on maintaining roads is the title. It says Russell County, through the Russell County Commissioners, agrees agree to the maintaining of the road East Shoreline Drive from the Russell County Lincoln County line to Kansas Highway 232. In return, Lincoln County, through the Lincoln County Commissioners, agreed to maintain the access road from Kansas Highway 232 through Wilson Lake Estates. The maintaining of the road shall include the hauling of all necessary road materials, the physical maintenance of the road, the mowing of the shoulders of the roads, and snow removal from the roads. This agreement shall be in effect, well, we've got a typo there or whatever, the agreement shall be in effect for a period of one year, beginning January the 1st, 2015, and ending December 31st, 2015, and shall be renewed for like annual periods unless either party provides the other with notice of cancellation of the, of the agreement at least 30 days in advance of the December 31 of the lease year then in effect. So I guess we have a ongoing agreement with Russell County to do this now. Is that correct, Jim? Lex? Yeah, unless we've canceled it, and we haven't, so it continues in a force. But I don't think our highway department's been maintaining, uh, or maybe we have once in a while, but we haven't had a scheduled maintenance of uh, Wilson Lake Estates. Is that correct, Alexis? Do you know any more about this? I believe doing the snow removal. I do not know how much material has been placed out there. Um, I'm sure the highway department has that information. But over the last several years, I don't think anything has structurally been done to the paved portion of the road that Russell County took over. So we do need to discuss this, I think, with the com their commission. Yeah, I think it would be good since we've 
fix the landslide issue and we're kind of we're in debate on what is our responsibility with the roads up there. Maybe we should get with Russell County and review all of this stuff again, in my opinion. Jim, do you have any input? No, uh, it'd just be an information meeting because this apparently is going to be in effect until December of 2020 if we want to cancel or to change it because it's in effect now. Signed by all the commissioners in both counties and both clerks and stamped and sealed and all that. So unless we change it next 1st of December, it's in effect. Yeah, that's fine with me as long as we are. I would just like to know what we are doing if, and what our responsibilities are. And what This kind of is vague here to me. Maintaining the road East Shoreline Drive is what Russell County is doing. From, I guess it's not too bad, to the Kansas Highway 232 in return. We're doing it. We're going to maintain the access road from Kansas 232 through Wilson Lake Estates. Well, that's quite a big statement there. Through Wilson Lake Estates, there are multiple roads through there. And what, you know, so. Well, I don't, you know, I don't care if we talk to them or not. I, I would just like to touch base with them, decide what they are doing and what we should do in, in the full uh, picture of what we're doing here. It might be of interest to have both county boards and the both highway department bosses meet out in Wilson County Lake sometime and see what the deal is, make sure we're all in agreement. John, this question is to you. Did you happen to send that to the highway department as well when you found that agreement? I don't think I did, but I think he's seen it. Okay. And he may have a copy, but we have a copy here for him to give to Dave. Okay. Thank you. We can review it later and talk to Brendan and see if he can get with the Russell County Highway Department and uh, maybe discuss things. And I agree with Jim. Maybe we could, if we have to. I think I'd like to just to go over with Russell County, ask them what we're all doing to comply with this. Uh, you know, because, you know, when we went through this landslide issue, it was kind of uncertain who was doing what out there. They were even putting down their own materials. They had some of that new crushed rock, you know, and I don't think Lincoln County provided that. So I would just like to, you know, I'd like to get some understanding here in writing again, maybe define these things better so that we don't go through what we went through the last year with the issues out there. What do you think, Alexis? Any input? I think we can just task the highway department to set up that meeting. And even if they call into our commission meeting, or like Mr. Gableman suggested, we could all meet out there to physically look and see uh, what exactly needs done. That would be fine. I agree to any of that. Yeah, and I do too. I would just like to, you know, let's get this issue resolved so we know who's responsible for what. So five years from now, we don't go through this again. Anyway, you got any, that's one issue. That's one letter here, Don, printed for us. Uh, are you ready to move on, Alexis? We'll move on to other mail here. Sure. All right, we got a bill from Street Plumbing for $48.75 for uh, Lincoln Park Manor toilet, dishwasher, booster, or leaking. Technician tightened up the stool and also silicone around the base. Dishwasher booster is something that is being rented through another company and then one will need to be ordered with them. I think I talked to Jonathan or about this and uh, they decided that that, uh, that dishwasher issue was neither that was there before, uh, I think before even uh, Kristen Robinson and even before that. So I don't think that's an issue for us. That's an issue Mr. Grace, I think, is going to have to deal with. I talked to Jonathan about that. But anyway, we have this bill for forty-eight seventy-five. I'm sorry I deviated here for this Lincoln Park Manor toilet and dishwasher booster. Uh, I don't know if we want to, I guess we'll prove that. Any issues, questions on that, Jim or Alexis? Mm -hmm. No. Okay, and then I have a just a handwritten note here, 12-20-19, 
10.50 a.m. Dan Haina called for me to put into time doc, time clock, that he is off today, the 20th, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. He also said I had some... Missed punches. Sorry, that wasn't supposed to get to you. We were going to talk about that during the funeral. That's yours? I should have Yes, that I had Hannah write a letter because this is an example of what we're having to do that we shouldn't have to do for department heads. So we'll discuss that when we discuss HR. Okay. And here we have a uh, another bill from Street Plumbing for Lincoln Park Manor. Technician adjusted a flapper on one stool and tightened the tank on the other. Uh, $48.75. Yeah, I'm a little concerned about those things. I think Jonathan can't do that. Yeah, I think he should be able to do that. I, I could do that. Over the weekend, I rebuilt three toilets in my house from scratch. That, that's, no, hell no. Right, I mean, Lise clearly explains that they are to have a, a maintenance staff, and I would consider that regular maintenance. Absolutely. Yeah, I could even do that, so it must be not too difficult, so... I kind of agree with you on that one. Okay. okay. And then we have uh, another, uh, I have a, uh, from the hospital board, another, oh, this is one I didn't get, whether it was last, I forgot to take it. I went to the hospital board meeting Tuesday night. I'll report that now. I got, here's the, uh, there's a handout they give. I forgot to get it, so I went there, but I just listened, and they're still in discussions with, uh, they're going to have a meeting today, actually, at 2 o'clock in the executive session, and they're talking over, discussing with this one lady about temporary, uh, or being a temporary administrator or CEO. So I, and there was nothing new in the, uh, here, except that their finances are getting lower, uh, on cash is lower. They have some concerns about, they pay payroll here in December. They have a few concerns about January, but I'll leave it at that for now. And they got to be to get it too, but I think it's executive session only, so I don't even know if I'll go there because I don't go into their executive session. So they're ongoing trying to hire this uh, CEO lady, uh, temporary. Uh, and then hopefully she can recruit another administrator. That's at least where they were. Any is question? Any Alexis or Jim? Mm -hmm. And we'll know more after today. And also, I would like to say it's very, it, it is very nice to see them making an effort to increase their communication to our board as far as letting us know what's happening in a preemptive manner. Yes, I talked to Mr. Broberg. He's been very cooperative here, and uh, I've talked to him some more over this last week about their position and situation, and they want to work with us. And they know that we kind of had a concern about them not being, the, the, uh, the board not being involved more, and they plan to be involved more on the day-to-day uh, -day activity, especially con contracts and hiring and and things like that so hopefully that is well, when it comes down to the cost of things they should always know that they don't the board isn't necessarily responsible for the operations of what's happening inside of the hospital as far as the faculty and the patients are concerned but when, when it comes down to knowing the cost and the price they should always be aware right and i think mr uh, broberg uh, realizes that we had that issue and he agrees now I think somewhat to definitely now obviously they're looking for a new CEO or a new administrator and, so uh, I, I asked a question last week and I would like to know does anyone else in the commission find it disturbing that to date the board the hospital board has still not seen the contracts with the current providers Well, I think that is a concern, yeah, that I, I think they have now, Alexis, looked at things. I think, no, Mr. I just, I think Mr. Broberg is more involved now. Yeah, I asked him on Monday, remember, and, and any any of the board members that were there at the meeting, Mr. Krangle, Mr. 
Grover, um, Bill uh, Houston. the president, Bill Houston, Mr. Houston. I think there was one other member at least, and I asked specifically, has anyone seen the contracts? And they still had not as of last Monday. I think they did since then, though. I talked to Mr. Broberg last Thursday. So okay. I, I agree you were right. I'm not arguing with you. I think they should have been more involved on the contracts, especially, and uh, hiring. And and they know that they have uh, a, a lot of expense compared to income. And they hopefully will deal with that. Yeah, Cindy has a question for you. Randy, they also at the meeting uh, froze all additional hiring and placing. Right. Things. Right. Cindy reminded me that they were they're freezing all hiring and for the next 90 days uh, and other major purchases too. So. Well, my concern is they have dug themselves in such a hole over there that it's going to be very difficult to get out without some significant expenditure of time, effort, and money. And I'm not sure how we're going to get over this. Uh, he said in the meeting that they could make it through December, but he wasn't sure at all how they were going to make it through January until we release the funds on the 20th. So that could lead us to 20 days of not having any spending money over there, and you just can't operate like that. Yeah, there's a concern. Actually, I noticed in the minute that Don noted the disbursement's going to be on the 31st of January. Is that correct, Don? Correct. Because they don't get it through until you guys approve AP. Okay. So that's, okay. yeah, that. They thought it was a 20th yet. for some reason. I wonder why. Well, anyway, uh, yes, there's a cash flow issue there. We, they may be coming to us <coughs> concerning that, too, and, uh, before the 31st. So we'll have to determine what to do. Anyway, I've, that's one issue. Let's want to move on. I do have more correspondence if you're ready. Well, I have. I think we got something here from uh, Campbell and Johnson, PA. Who's what are they done? I think they're just they architect. Architect. It's a calendar. Way to look. I'll get this all oh. up in They gave us a calendar as a president here. Present here. So that goes in Alexis' stack. But yeah, you're getting all this stuff, Alexis, in a pile here. That's fine. Anyway, uh, that's all I have. That or that's Don gave us for May. Okay, you have some more correspondence. Uh, yes, to our commission email from Sean Peterson, 33 Ridge Road, Sylvan Grove. But it says, "When will the road crew be back?" And I'm sorry, this came in last Monday, but it was after. We had adjourned. It was right at the end of our meeting, 2.38 p.m. Um, it says, when will the road crew be back to finish up what they tore up? This is ridiculous. The way it was had been fine. It was flat, grass, able to be mowed. In fact, water never ran down that side of the road. The repairs that were needed to stop the slide caused it to run down the road. Now that it's fixed, it should stay on the other side of the road, therefore making this unnecessary. Do we not contact property owners to discuss? I could have explained what happened when it rained. And then there was a picture with this message. There's no notation of the actual location, but the picture, it, it kind of, it looks like what they did was try to restore a ditch alongside the road. And they were, the person who wrote in say, was saying that it was flat and was grassed in. Well, I believe that would be because there was no ditch. So it looks like our road crew tried to uh, reclaim a ditch on that side of the road. I guess we need to pass this along to Mr. McKay, but I just wanted to let you know that came in in our email. And then the other note that we had was just from Dawn. Um, well, it was correspondence between... Jonathan Shale and Don Harlow about the dishwasher and just saying that we don't own it, neither does Lincoln Park Manor. They actually didn't even need that particular part that stopped working, so they get to get rid of a contract with a company and we don't have to deal with paying for anything, so it worked out. Right, I talked to Jonathan about that too, so. Okay. Yeah, it was confusing because they didn't know, I told him to research what uh, the history was in there. I guess we found that out. So, okay. 
Anything else, well, Alexis? Yes, while we're talking about the nursing home, we did get, I, I don't think we discussed this before, but we did get a report of the census. So from January 18 through just last month, it looks like we're right around 31 to 32, somewhere in there, I would say, if I had to do an average. Yeah, yeah, I think I, that's about where, the, that's what I heard, too. They are about 31 to 30. They were up to 33, I think, in the summer for a while. Okay. okay. Just, just as a follow-up, I wanted to make sure we, we noted that, because that's the only way that we know what the rent is supposed to be. Have we received any more rent checks from Lincoln Park Manor? No, I don't believe so. Just the one. Okay. That's all the correspondence I had. Well, I shouldn't say that. I do have other correspondence that came in to me personally, not to our, our commission email. There's still some concern about the material that was taken out of the Zacco pit <coughs> and pl placed on Union. Um, and then also a separate concern again from Steve Schneider about Union and 50th. So... I really, I kind of just have been asking for some patience. We need some evaporation to happen, which may or may not happen over the winter time. So that's kind of a, a problem. But there was a lot of material placed on the road from that particular pit that is just, people are complaining of rock breaks in their tires and just that the material is sloppy. So we'll bring that up again at the highway department section. Okay. Now these street That's bills, do you, uh, you want to pay for these street bills or one of them? Remember I had, we had these two street bills, one for 48.75 and another for 48.75. Well, the one fixing toilets, we don't pay for that. Okay, but the technician, one was also how to fix the toilet. I guess we'll pay for that, huh? One was for caulking and something else and the other one was for the flapper you said now one was technician tightened up the stool and also silicone around the base and then uh, well the other one was for the flapper well see those are things that we should be doing not we but your maintenance guy you don't need to call street for fifty dollars a piece to do that you do that on your own every homeowner i know fixes his own toilets like that that's, those I, aren't right. I agree. We have it in the lease that they're supposed to provide maintenance. That's regular maintenance. That's okay. not anything that okay. specialized. So we won't approve these then, correct? Correct. All right, I'll give them to Don, not approved. And we'll just say uh, they need to do their with own the, paper. With the commission's it. permission, I will go ahead and send an email to Mr. Shale. I did get his correct email, so I will let him know if you give me permission to go ahead and do that right now. Yeah, you got my permission. Yep. Okay. Do you have any other correspondence, Alexis? I do not. Okay, it's around about 10.30. We have Mr. Walter here from the ambulance service uh, on the agenda, so we'll bring you up. Barry? Okay. I have Tim Leitniker with me today with okay. American Response Vehicles. Um, you guys were interested in, in what kind of financial terms that we could set up with these guys. I'm going to let you were talking. Is this the? That's the remount, Randy. Oh, the remount. Oh, the remount for the uh, mm -hmm. for the uh, truck or the. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well. Yeah. If you want to discuss what you have. Sure. Um, one of the one of the nice things about being represented or, or essentially owned by a larger company is the uh, ability for in-house financing. Um, I sent Derek a proposal on that. I'll pull it up here real quick.
So the, the total price to remount that unit um, is, is $89,454. Uh, I know you had talked about the potential of having a down payment, is that right? I, yes. Okay. Um, so what we've done is, is we've factored um, or calculated two um, proposed terms, a three-year term and a five-year term. And typically one of the ways that people like to do this is with their payments in arrears. However, um, you could utilize one of these payments as your down, your down payment um, and just slash one of those payments off. Um, so for the three-year term, it, annual payments paid in advance, 3.75% uh, payments are $30,922.20. Uh, with the five-year term at 3.8%, uh, same thing, paid in advance, your annual payments are $19,249.55. And there, there are other options as well um, that we could explore, but this is a, a relatively low cost. Um, it's, we call this an active lease purchase. So if we would agree to something like this, uh, how long would it be before the unit would be ready? Uh, we're 90 days after confirmation, um, so basically once once Derek and I and, and the remount facility have come together and said this is exactly what we want, let's place that order and, and sign off on it, then we're 90 days out. That's to start the process. To That's for, a com for the finished unit. Oh, finished? That's finished. Wow, well, I thought it was going to take like nine months or a That's, year. That's what many of them are. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Well, wasn't that the other company? That was 180 days, uh, 200 days out. And that was that was through Osage Ambulance. Mm -hmm. They were quite a bit higher, right? They were 14,000 higher. Yeah. Well, Alexis, I, I don't know if I've asked Derek before, he was saying that one unit was needing a new big truck or a new bottom part of the, the whole unit. And I just said, had come to the board and talked to us about it. So I don't, I'm not just, he's still, that's what he's doing here, is throwing out some numbers. So I wanted to, wanted to get this approached before the end of the year. That way, all this is on the table. Right. Before, before we do anything for the end of the year. <coughs> and this saves a ton of money over a complete new truck purchase. I mean, you say the box is good, right? Oh, my. Yeah. It, yeah, there's no problems with yeah, that box, Jim. That's what allowed us to, to be able to do this at, at such an effective cost, mm -hmm. is that the box is in great shape. Yeah, take um, good care of that box. That's been a good box. Yeah, as, as far as a new ambulance would be concerned, I mean, this is just a little over half the price. So, you know, on a, on a lower end for the same type of ambulance to be manufactured brand new, you'd be... 160,000 yeah. Last year, I think they spent 180 on that truck that's in the shed right now. The new one. Yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> so out of curiosity, this would address the second truck. Where are we with the third one in any future need? As far as looking at making payments between three or five years, where are we in need with the other? Well, I guess we have two more, correct? Well, one of them's brand okay. new. But we have four total? No, we have three. One's in Sylvan. Oh, okay. And then two here. Two in here, and the the motor on the one is not good, and that's what we would replace. The boxes are good. The one is very good, box and, and truck, right, brand new. The so one's really good, totally. The next, the second one is what we're talking about, is the box is very good, but the truck itself needs repaired or fixed, or, and this is... So and then, then now the silver one. It, go ahead. Yeah, gonna, what is going to be need, needing done with the third one? If we commit to making payments to change out, you know, put the box on a new um, truck, then what will we need to be doing in the near future with that third? I one? hope. I hope nothing. Uh, the, okay. The truck doesn't run a lot, um, and it's a four-wheel drive, and which is what Sylvan needs in in their hills. With the roads and things, um, okay. I, I think that they're okay for a while. So budgetarily, do you think we need to look at three years or five years? 
It'd be cheaper five on payments, but then yeah, it's the last one. thousand if you go three years. Mm -hmm. Do you have the budget on uh, your capital outlay to afford any of this? Well, what do we have? 25000 rolled over from this year. And I think that that's capital outlay every year. And I hate to completely wipe out my capital outlay on things because things do happen. Um, that's what's budgeted, though. That may not be what we can transfer. We won't know until we get your final bills in. So you're saying you probably are constrained to the five years, 19,000. I'm thinking, yeah. Because, you know, deer jump out and things, things do happen. So what kind of lifespan are we looking at then when we do this? Excuse me? If we transfer the box to a new truck, what kind of lifespan are we looking at then with this new piece of equipment, basically? What do you think, 10, 10 years? Uh, the life of the chassis, really. Um, what will happen is, is they'll go through the box and, and make sure that everything's just in tip-top shape. Um, you know, with, with the shape it's in, we really haven't gone through to replace anything. We're going to address electrical system. Uh, we're going to add a fridge, replace the HVAC, just pretty much boilerplate stuff. Um, and, and once that box is remounted to the new chassis, then, I mean, essentially it's, it's the life of the chassis that determines that from there. Um, you know, so a hundred So I'm ignorant. Yeah, yeah. I, ten years would be Absolutely. adequate for sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So if we commit to five years of payments, that's half of the life. Yeah, it, the it's not ten. used up in five years by any stretch. That, okay. That's a good question. And you've talked to how many other companies? This is two. Okay. We have never got a response out of the others. Okay. And the other one's almost twice as high. Well, it was with a 200 day lead time? Mm -hmm. Well, it was 14,000 higher. Yeah. Well, it looks to me like it's a settled issue. Looks to me like you only have 15000 in capital outlay here. If I'm reading that right, maybe I'm not. But. I know I'm supposed to keep my mouth shut, but you really don't have adequate information to determine whether or not you can actually do it. You also need to check with your local banks to see if they could offer some kind of financing and keep the money local if you are really serious about financing. And they well, call it lease purchases. Well, you can't really finance. We can't borrow money. A kind of government can't borrow money, so that's why they call them leases. Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. ours is an is an active lease purchase as well. Is what they call it. So I don't I don't know if the banks can meet that, but we always try to give them the opportunity. Yeah, definitely. Well, I just wanted to bring this forward before the end of the year, and then let the chips fall where where the numbers are, and so we can look at. Okay, yeah, thanks. Anything else you want to throw in, Tim? Uh, do you guys have any questions for me? No, I, not anymore. I don't have any more. Access to you. I think we just to analyze the numbers, look at the budget here for the end of the year, and maybe, Derek, if you would come in, see if you can put yourself on the agenda here in the next few weeks in sure. January and discuss budget, Certainly. see where we are with what we've been paying out, you know, comparatively to years prior, because we did have a few guessing years there. Um, I know Dawn had been working her best to do the budget kind of from her office, and so now you're in charge of that, and this was your first year. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, well, appreciate that. Do we need to keep track but thank of you for getting the bait. We need to keep track yeah. of what you spent that we don't have to ask for. So we kind of know Absolutely. what the maximum Absolutely. Yep. Yep. which should be very small. Okay. I'll probably call you in the 27 or something yeah. to see what we can transfer. Okay. Very good. Okay. Well, thank, thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Donna, did you have something? Yes. Yes, she and I. Yeah. Yes, yeah. guys. I appreciate your time. Thank you.
Yeah, thank, thank you. you. You're welcome. Maybe we'll get back to you guys. We'll have to see our budget situation. Okay. Absolutely. As you know. It's kind budgets. of the name of the game. Yeah, it is, too. So, gentlemen, thank you very thank much. You. That's not a suitcase full of money. Drive safe. What's that? That's not a suitcase full of money. You're in the league. Thank you, guys. Um, we wanted to go into executive session, and I, I think number four is that we want to talk about ambulance billing and some of the billing that's out there and yep. a couple questions, but um, they're more, I think it could be executive it's session. Personal confidential on, on billing practices, guys. Does that work? Let's look at your sheet. If you're naming specific patients, then yes. We're not. Not so much, but confidential billing practices. I don't think that's what this well, is. I don't have any problem with that. Alexis, do you? I mean, to, to qualify for executive session, we need to be discussing something that cannot be disclosed. Otherwise, we need to speak in general terms with just um, numbers. If you don't use names and or specific procedures that were performed, then I suppose it's still open session. Or policies? Financial policies aren't protected? Oh, for um, Billing? insurance policy? Billing? Yes, it, that is protected, yes. Okay. All right, then I'll, I'll make a motion then to go into executive session uh, for how long? 10 minutes, 15? 10 fine. For 10 minutes, for the purpose of discussing uh, uh, policies relating to financial affairs or trade secrets and corporation partnerships, trusts and individual proprietorships. With the... Uh, Was that number four? Number four, yeah. I'll pursue it to KSA 754-3192-B, number four. And I just read what it is. It's again financial affairs or trade secrets of corporations, partnerships, trusts, and individual proprietorships. With the director of EMS, Derek Walter, with Donna Reiner, the uh, high, or the uh, health department director, and the commissioners and the uh, county clerk for five minutes, for ten minutes, ten minutes, for ten minutes to reconvene in the courthouse uh, commissioner room when concluded. I second that. Hang, hang on one second. Okay. Is the subject, because he read the thing, so what is the subject? Um, right. I confidential ambulance billing? Policies? Policies. Okay. Ambulance, ambulance billing, billing sure. policy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I didn't. Th that's okay. I, I yeah. well, got kind of. Well, I didn't know either. <laughs> ambulance? I kind of just let Adonis sure. say what it was. What? Well, I would say insur insurance, billing, and payments. Those would all be covered as far as no one's entitled to know how anyone's getting billed or how they're paying. Okay, so ambulance billing policies, insurance billing, and payments. Okay. Yes. Reconvene. To reconvene in the county commission, at the courthouse and the county commission room. And Jim seconded already. Any more discussion, Alexis? No. And we said 10 minutes, yeah. right? For 10 minutes. minutes. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Race executive session. Don't, don't make a motion until it's gone. At this point, at this point, I don't think it needs to be executive session because we're just going to talk about policy. Yeah. We kind of know okay. what the executive session material is. Okay, that's fine. Okay. So what we want is Derek to write a policy. Yeah. And I think... Send what we have and see what happens. What's that? Send them the statements we have and see what happens. I think. And then we'll deal with issue by issue as it comes up. And I don't know when you put a little note in there saying... There may have been a clerical error somewhere. Just leave it out and let them. I put it. I did put a note on the statements that says um, these are these these some of these may be back from 2017, 18, and 19. If you have proof that you have paid any of these, please bring that with you 
and come and speak to me. Work because me. at this point, everything that we have is in the system and straightened up, so it should be correct. But I can't guarantee that there might be a little error here or there. So. You might want to visit me, the billing company and find out if they yes. have anything to... We're still, yeah. Does that solve your problem? Yes, sir. Right. And on the waivers, like she was talking about, if you're gonna, if they don't pay, we need to be consistent. Either sure. one That's way why we need a policy. One way yeah. or the other. And mm -hmm. Is there because a written policy at all, Don? That, no. Okay. But it, our standard policy was we didn't write off until they were five years old. Okay. But that's yeah. Okay. There's not a written policy. Not a policy. So you'd need be to, consistent. So. Okay. I mean, I can look and double check, but. Okay. Okay, Lexus, can you hear us or are you? Yes, I yes I can hear you. I had to shut off the video because it was just not clear. So I guess what we're dealing with is how we're going to handle what what do we call this post billing? The insurance has already been billed, and now we're entering a stage of billing the individual statements to the patient. Yes, I guess their patient <laughs> statements is what. We should call them versus Either billing. insurance is paid or insurance didn't cover. Yeah. And anything that wasn't covered or wasn't already collected. So we want to know for how many days or if there's a how many years we're going to continue to send billing statements to people to collect on unpaid portions of their bill, whether or not their insurance or anything else is paid. Correct. And in your department, for the health department, it's two years? Correct. And have we sent out, basically we're talking about going back to 2017 and then to present. Correct. This is the first round of statements that will go out. Okay, so I think it's only fair to say that we send them out this time blanket. That way it's the same for everyone. And then if, you know, if we want to make our policy and go from there, you already have them prepared, correct? Yes. Okay. We won't send them out probably till the end of the week. Okay. Well, I think because we've had some overlapping and billing issues with, we were doing it in-house, we changed directors of the department, now we have a third-party billing company so basically we're saying whatever the third party billing company wasn't able to collect, we are now in house sending out that residual money, you know, trying to collect that residual money. Correct. Okay. And is the commission content with leaving the formation of the policy up to the current director of the department? Yes. Yeah, I am. And, the, and you're willing to take on that responsibility, Mr. Walter? Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how is it working out billing the EMS from the health department for your hours of doing this? We submit an invoice at the end of the month for the hours that are spent. And is that going to continue for the foreseeable future, or do you need to have an end date to that process? Well, as long, as long as we're continuing to do that, I guess that's a discussion that the commission needs to have. If they want that just to be enfolded into the health department and us not do that, or at, at this point in time, I don't think um, we will be spending too much time on it if we can do it once a week and stay up to date with the Lisa. So um, I guess that's a, a commission, that's a conversation for another time maybe. This month has been the biggest month. Has so. that been working okay for both of you guys? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Okay. Well, if it's working okay, I, I would say continue it. Good. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions, Lex? Well, we're going to move on. We're a little behind here. That's it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Okay. Thank you. Go forth and do good. Okay. Uh, Miss Albers. Judy Albers. Okay. Sorry, we're a little behind, Judy. 
This is about getting uh, you to approve our new members. Uh, where's the box? Uh, she's okay. on remote. She's uh, yeah, but I. I'll give you more information on your file. Okay, I have. We had a couple of resignations. You already received one from Bob Loveless last week. Uh, Nancy Mitch has given us one again uh, due to the health of her husband. She's unable to hear and people wanting um, for Alexis. I'll read this during the December. Meeting of the Lincoln County Council on Aging, the board chose the following members as suggestions to fill the available positions. We had member, one member reach term limits, one resign because of health issues, one resign because of work. We are anxious to continue services to the seniors of Lincoln County. We helped organize our... I think it's just playback. I did send her a copy of it, so if you don't want to, I think it's interference. Okay. We are missing one person from District 1. Okay. Um, we're still working to try and find. But I'd like approval today to con so that we can continue for next month if these people know they'll be on the board and then the way the bylaws state they're supposed to have election of officers in December too many people were going off we tabled that till next month here again we can't have a election unless you approve these people coming off I have no objection to anybody on the board. And uh, we could. Uh, did you get a. Well, actually, you probably haven't seen this last time. Oh, yes, I did see it. Oh, Don, you sent it. Oh, I'm sorry. Good. Uh, do you have any questions or anything, Alexis? No. I don't either. Um, but we only have to do the ones that are 2021, right? Because the ones that. Are expiring 2020. We would have done last year. Well, except we we got two that have resigned: Bob Loveless and uh, Nancy uh, Mitch Nancy. and uh, uh, Mark Schneider is oh. going off, and I'm going off. Okay, well, Phil got it. Mark Schneider, due to health reasons, she did not reapply. Me, I've been there too long. I have to stay off for at least one year. Okay. So, so Kathy Moss is really the only one that doesn't need to be appointed, but everybody else needs to be appointed today. Yes. Okay. So Barbara Beach, Kathy Arnold, Gwen Knight. Well, Jean. Jody Webb. You're left on her term. Oh, so no. Yes. Yeah. You're right. Okay. Yeah. So we're appointing four new people, right? Yeah, Judy so, Free still has a year right. on um, her term. Okay, got it. Well, I'll make a motion that we approve <laughs> the following people on this list. Barbara Beach, Jody Webke, Kathy Arnold, Gwen Knight, and note that Jean Fries and Kathy Moss are already uh, on the board and been approved. I'll, I'll second. Okay, Alexis seconded. Okay, then we'll bring them back. Well, well we got a list vote on here for. We have a motion and a second by Alexis Don. We may have a motion and a second to approve these individuals Jim stated. Uh, any other discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. All, no, none against. We interrupted you. No, go ahead, Judy. Next month, whenever the officers and, and whoever we can find this one 
for District 1 position, you'll have another copy. Yep. Okay. Okay? Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Did Thank you. Did you get a copy of this? Yep. And Jim, you stated also two people will be going off. Yes, I did. I okay. named them Jim now we have and Kathy Moss. Okay. okay. All right. Ready to move on to uh, Brendan, Brendan, again. Brendan McKay, the Highway Department Director. Should have been here 20 minutes ago. Oh, well, you're in executive session. Always an excuse. Oh, yeah. All right, Brendan, what's going on? So, well, the roads at Wilson Lake, I spoke with Russell County. They were, they thought that agreement that we had. Did you hear the copy original, okay. too? Yep. That's the original uh Yep. Done. So I went back. I, they sent me this as well, and it says it, it's renewed annually, but it's only for a period of one year. There was a misunderstanding there, so they're going to be putting a new one together and getting it out to us. Is well, this says this them. is automatically renewed every year. That's what they thought, but it, it's it re shall be renewed annually for periods. But unless this was just like how the, all the other ones were. Yeah, but this says unless somebody objects to it in December. <coughs> and that's exactly how all of the other agreements yeah. shall be read, renewed. But they what? still did it every year. Okay. So, in other words, they didn't live up to this agreement. Because, like Jim just stated, it says, shall be renewed for like periods unless either party provides the yes. other with notice of cancellation. Well, nobody provided notice of cancellation. Correct? So, uh. And so it should have been. It should have been. You're saying they renewed this every year then? Or? This is what, from the ones I found, wording was exactly the same, but okay. every year they sent a new one out. Oh, okay. Okay. But that doesn't uh, obviate the clause that says this is automatically renewed unless you object. So, yeah. Yeah. And that, that, that's so in essence, it's still in effect. Should be yes. Yeah. Are you there, Alexis? What yes, we kind of like to do is sure. have a meeting out there or sometime you and your counterpart and maybe the six commissioners get together and, and agree that everybody's in agreement. Okay. Do you think that's necessary or not? I think if we can go out there and actually see the area, it'd be beneficial for yeah, their know. side and do our side. Do you think you could put something together like that? I can, I can start it for us. I appreciate it. It would be good. Lexus, have you heard what's going on here? You kind of yes. dropped off. We're talking with Brennan about uh, this, the with the, about the Wilson Lake Estates uh, dealing with Russell County and Lincoln County and who was responsible in our uh, earlier agreement here and he where we're at now on it. And Jim requested him maybe we set up a meeting in the future, kind of just to hash this out again. To determine what we're where we're at, and maybe renew this agreement. It's kind of vague, in my opinion. Do you have any questions? You drop off again, Alexis. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful technology. Man. Anyway, uh, I agree with. Why don't we? And also. Let's either agree to renew it every year automatically or do the one-year deal. We yeah. need to hash that it, out, it, it's, it, They contradict each other. Right. Well, let's figure it, out one it, way to have a it. term limit, but then it also says it's going to be annually renewed, and then because and then, there used and, to be one every year. And then, we, now, and then let's determine, like you said, we have that, what, 1.7 miles or something on that plot map that we supposedly maintain. Yep, let's determine, that. is that what we're really going to do, and then what our responsibilities are, and we get it in writing, so we know what we're doing, they know what they're doing, and then we yep. don't have to meet in five years again to figure out what we're doing. Yep. Okay. okay. And what then, I'd recommend is when you show up out there at this meeting, you have one of these ready to sign, written the way you want, so all six people or eight people can sign it on the Well, at least we can, re and somebody can review at least. Okay. Too. So that we don't have this misunderstanding, you know. And I know it's complex because we've had the lake grow up and uh, it was never clean what we were, anybody was doing. And then Sean Peterson, he contacted me at the office last week. I met with him Friday morning to discuss his concerns and issues he had going on out there. So on his property, before there never was a ditch. Yeah. Part of fixing everything is you need to be able to control water out there so it doesn't keep jumping back and forth all across the roads. Right. So we installed a ditch, went through there, replaced the culvert that was plugged, that was an access point for them, 
his concern was that it never ran water until, unless it was heavy rain or the other ditch got over full or plugged up. Explain to him that that's why we need to have a ditch there to control water flow so it does not keep jumping back and forth. He was also concerned with when they have guests over, they just park on the side of the road and pull straight out of the yard. Now they can't because we have established a ditch there. And then come springtime, I will go out there personally and throw seed to help prevent erosion because they didn't want to look like hillbillies. And I agree. It's a nice area. We can seed it. I'll personally throw a hand throw seed in that ditch. So it, uh -huh. it doesn't look, it doesn't erode further up from their property. They'd like it slope more, but in order to do that, we would be going off the right of way, which I don't feel comfortable yeah. with doing. No. So we will do what we can to blend it in better, and then we'll seed it with grass seed come springtime. Okay. Just, the weather kind of got to is it. Is he happy with that? They said we'll see what it looks like in spring. Okay. I guess someone said he sent the letter in too to you guys. Well, he sent it to Alexis. Okay. Alexis, Alexis talked to us earlier a while ago about it okay. before you were here. It sounded like you got it under control. Yep, I met with him Friday. Well, we want to prevent, is that where the water drained out and then walked across where we have the uh, land side now, or is that a different area? So he owns the property. There's that new house being developed to the yeah, north. Top the hill up there. Yes, yes. Yeah. so he is just to the southwest of there, that okay. A-frame mm -hmm. house. Farmhouse okay. style house. Yeah. So just south of where the landslide was, where you can see that where the water would go back and forth across okay. the roadway. Yeah. And then go down towards the Boy Scout camp and jump across a couple times down there. Right. So when we were cleaning the ditches from the oil, making ditches and establishing them all the way up to that corner, it was so that way the water doesn't continue to cut back and forth across the road, creating big ruts. Yeah. To help control it so it, it be, it's not less of an issue in the future. The water's not going to run over and jump back and forth. Okay. Did you, right where that, did we redo that ditch where that person, where the landslide was, the house right in front of it went to the east, there was a little ditch that came around a curve there on that road. Did we redo that when we did all this landslide work? Kenny did that. Kenny did that, okay. If I'm not mistaken, right around the bottom yeah. side in the corner they, okay. when he laid that pipe. And they're happy with that because I, they haven't said anything to me if I'm okay. not on that. Okay. All right. They, I think they've got other issues when the people hit the phone line in front of their house and hit the water line. Too. Well, they knew there were utilities there when they did that. So. Yep. And then Spil Spillman Creek. I think I left the water. Uh, still waiting to hear back from Mike from Southern Star. He's been leave on leave for the holidays to see about. He was talking with his operations personnel to see if they could sleeve it. What are you talking about now? The Spillman Creek, we're going to relocate the road by Spillman Creek. Oh, Wally, Wally yes. well, Sheldon Creek thing. Yeah. Yes. So I, I think Lee has been on vacation, so I haven't heard back from him yet. I plan on leaving another voicemail and sending an email this afternoon to him on that. Well, it's holiday time now. That, that's it. I think they're on the holiday. They're shut down until probably after New Year's. Right? Yep. And then Wally came in. He left. He called in last week, and I left him a voicemail. And then he came into office this morning. He says the commission agreed to give him one day to uh, for us let to me, open the I'll road. tell you what the commission was meeting. Okay. And, uh, he talked to me about it. And he uh, what, what he wanted to do is have you move the barriers for just today and set them back tonight so he can move his hay out of there. And uh, we agreed. He talked to you already. And we agreed that if he moved the rocks, and put him back at the end of today, then he could move his hay across there, and I think that's what he's going to do. He needed to do it before the commission meeting, so I told him, go ahead and do it. You okay, take so full responsibility for if you fall on that bridge, okay. it's on you. And well, he's, he's hauling hay, and he didn't go to Well, a couple that months ago, we went through the same yeah. thing, and... Uh, well, this was, he pointed out, this is his one day. We never did it before. <laughs> well, I thought so, we determined you yeah. was going to make him a temporary road, but where he could drive across yeah. his own and ground, he, so right? He, yeah, so, but it's it's wet and sloppy, yeah. so he does not want to do that. We couldn't, we didn't finish putting in a second field entrance because of the gas line, yeah. but there is, if you continue to around the bend, there is the other entrance where the barn is sitting at, so he could go through his own property. It's just, if he didn't have to drive through his wheat field, I don't think he'd want to drive through his wheat field. But anyway, that's, he and I had the conversation. I told him, 
uh, go ahead and do it because we didn't have time to wait for the commission meeting. If he had to do it today, he'd get his head, he was cow, he better go ahead and do it. But he promised to move the rocks and put them back, so that should be it. And that's his one day that he was promised when we first started this. Okay. Well, we have to be consistent, though, in, yeah. in the future about, because we did say no a couple months ago, and we put in temporary road for him, remember, over his yep, land? that's and, why we put and, that. And I'm not for Wally, Jim, as much as you are, and want to have him help him out, but uh, if we're going to be consistent, we got either he make can use it or not. If Wally uses it today, then we might be five more people say, I want to use it tomorrow. That's and that's the trouble. But we're done with this, I guess, for now. If right. Wally uses it today, we're done, and... Uh, in the spring, it'll be fixed anyway. Yep. Anyway, Lexus, can you hear us or what? I don't know if she's on or not. But anyway, okay, uh, hopefully nothing happens and that'll be over with. Yep. But and then, well, something like this in the future, we've got to be consistent. Yeah, okay. and that's why it surprised me when he called in, so I left him a voicemail so he could call me and get back to me on it so we could talk to the guy that wasn't aware the commission had yeah. said so. But our laser level, so we use a laser level yeah. to set ditches, culverts, to make yeah. sure we're not setting them too low, too high, it's broken. So for the style we would need, the first three or four of these are comparable to what we have. And the last two would be if we wanted to seriously make get it more higher accuracy, shoot further distances, but I feel the first three options in here would be comparable to what we would use it for for the distances we shoot. How much are those? Between For, for what we would need, it would be between $500 and $1,000 to shoot the distances we shoot. That's, you know, you got a $10,000 <laughs> good with what you it got. It was just more or less to show you the pricing between what we would, yeah. what we could use versus like using the transfer the Autolite to shoot higher accuracy and further distances. So a transit the Autolite, a basic model is generally around three thousand dollars. A laser level, which with a receiver, they can shoot up to a thousand to two thousand feet, depending upon how it's going to be. A whole lot easier to use. Yes, and you, you don't have to have someone give them the Autolite and take them out there and say shoot this. Yes, in I've, there, I've used them a lot. So. Yeah. More or less to show you guys the pricing yeah. of them. So How much that. is that? Between five hundred to one thousand dollars for what we would the style we would need yeah. to shoot our distances with accuracy. I feel comfortable with. For your own land, that's for your own uh, shooting your own. For shooting our ditches yeah. and culverts and things like that. Like landscaping would do or something. Not right. landscaping, but uh. So when we put in a new culvert to make sure we're not setting it too low, and yeah. we would. <clears throat> Hold water there and trap water there and loose flow, or set it too high in backwater. Right. We use a laser level to like shoot. Like a surveyor would do. Exactly. Like you're doing your own surveying work. Yes. Okay. Can you hear us? Yes, thank you. Sorry about that. <clears throat> so, Alexis, we were talking about our laser level is broken. It, they tried charging it up last week and this weekend. It will not power on. The model, it's an Eagle 1000, which is about 15 years old, based on the model okay. number I got from it. So a replacement one of similar capabilities would be between five hundred and one thousand dollars. Wow. I mean, you can get a home improvement one, but it wouldn't shoot the distances we would need it to shoot. Do it like you're going to use it often and for a long time. Don't okay. go cheap. Yep. You did say five hundred. Five hundred dollars to one thousand dollars. What's this for again? I'm sorry. The laser level. Oh, oh. okay, okay. No, 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 not five hundred thousand dollars. No, sorry. Okay. Five hundred dollars. <throat> yep. Not five hundred thousand dollars. Gotcha, gotcha. <clears throat> yeah, the last one I worked was a wild T2 Theodolite. You familiar with that one? Oh yes, I've used it too. I was a surveying TA at my school. We had yeah. one of them. So the back is the Autolites are total stations that would yeah. shoot better accuracy. They're not self-leveling. So, and then my cell phone number, since we got the cell phone plan for the emergency contact, is 785-420-1175. So if there's an after-hours question or emergency number, 
Four two zero one one seven five. Yes, sir. Okay. So you know, with Eagle, you can help them forward. For all forwarding to it. Okay. That was one of the features. I don't know how to use it. But yeah. Might be nice if there's not anybody in the office. Yep. Yeah. Not in the shop. Of course, voicemail is really nice too. And then up on Union and 50th and 45th up there, we're mixing and packing it this week. I looked at it a little bit this weekend when I was out family we traveling. I doesn't matter. We don't need it. Okay. Um, there are some, probably some areas where we're going to need a little bit of a rock, rock stone material. Yes. There's some areas where. Well, Alexis brought this up earlier for you right here. There was a lot of clay in that yeah. original material. Uh, it probably may need some rock. I know it's, we've been through this 10 times. And that's why I wanted to bring it up here. The commission yeah. wants us to. Every week we get this the call. It's like they're the only road in the county. Anyway, well, go you're, on. You're not going to do anything until the spring, are you? Or... We could probably, it could use, and we could spot a few loads to help problem spots out there. But doing a full overlay, I don't think it needs a full overlay. Yeah. But I think. Using the ro a roadstone type material road stone type would rock. help. Yeah, I, you don't want to use too much because it's a crusher. It's a crushed yeah. rock, so it is going to be sharp. Yeah. The pieces of it can be sharp, and that was my the concern with using just like a roadstone product from the local quarry. Is it's very angular, and I don't want. Hopefully, it'll settle into that. Yes, clay, clay that and that, that's yeah. if we do too much of that, you'll have a lot of tire cuts. I fear. And that's not something I want. Well, then they won't have the clay, though. So, but then they have I to feel get, we could spot. Then they have to buy brand new 10-ply tires. Yeah. I feel there's areas that could you, it would be beneficial to spot a few loads in if the commission is all right with us doing that. Well, I, like we say, best engineering judgment. You're the engineer. Okay. Well, it's spot, and you might want to do spots where it's bad. You yeah. Know, the whole place maybe doesn't need it. No, no, no. That's, I, I, right. The whole road doesn't need if it. If you there value, are, evaluate areas. it where it's the worst, even talk to Steve and say where. Well, the whole thing's bad. Well, yeah, well, no, it isn't. But uh, no. evaluate where it's the worst and fix yep. that. I do believe that area, it's going to take some time, as you explained before. I mean, I appreciate you paying attention to it, um, you know, seeing where you can maybe add some material, do some more mixing, et cetera. But um, <laughs> I'm afraid, you know, there was a suggestion of scraping it all off and starting from scratch. And we don't have the manpower time. And this is not the time of year to do something like that anyhow. So well, it isn't that bad been, either. It isn't that bad. Yeah. They're exaggerating constantly on how bad this is. Well, and that's what I've been trying to just relay the message that we appreciate some patience with this issue. Right. It takes any new gravel. You can put on very good gravel best we got. And you put that on, and if it gets rained on, it's going to be sloppy for a while before we're that gets talking, and packed not, down. That while is not a month. We're talking several years. Yeah, that thing it takes in. time to pack down any good, even good gravel. But then it has to be driven yeah. over and packed down. When it gets moisture, someone, it appears to be the same time we have moisture, there's purposeful deep ruts cut right in the center of the road. People drive in and plow it up. Yeah. And so then when it's where we can work it, all we're doing is putting the light stuff back in those holes in those ruts so that, it doesn't. It's not set up there, so the next bit of moisture we get, it, instead of shedding off the road as you would design a road to do, it inundates that light material in those ruts and just exacerbates the issue. Yeah. And the exception that I take is the people do that virtually every time, and they're shooting themselves in the foot if they get smart or wouldn't try to be idiots about it. They could help themselves out a whole lot. When you lose the crust of your road surface like that, exactly. the water gets goes into the road surface, and you can see the signs of it because yep. you'll see finger-like cracks along the edges. That means the water's going through the road material and not over the top of it to the ditches. But what they're so doing it, just, it compounds on itself. They're driving in the same ruts every time and just making it worse. So they need to help themselves a little it, bit. It's not NASCAR. We don't have to follow the I same road line. That. We can move over. But, okay. <coughs> Was there anything else the commission had? Well, I was just, some of these guys called back, I told you before, Bill okay. and Wink, Webb Winnicky. Sometimes yep. if you would address them, there's their numbers. Okay. Uh, I know it's winter, but 
They, 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 they need to want some assistance out their direction, please. Yep. Thank well, you. I was waiting for Dan's number from you. Well, there I go. Yeah, I'll get with Dave Bell, too. I think we could accommodate him over there. Uh, the pole to the bridge. He's well, or the decide, maybe talk to him. What, decide what we can do. I don't know what the best to do. You can determine that. Okay. But hopefully we can do something for him because... And he's a big farmer, and uh, them guys get upset they're going to start hauling all that grain to Salina instead of Lincoln, and that isn't good. And it, it, a lot of them already do that, I know, but and that, that's one concern he had, please, if you'd look into it. Yep. I don't have anything else, Jim? Nope, good to go. Lexus, do you have anything for Brendan? I will just go ahead and forward the email I got that I read earlier. I'll just forward it to you. From okay. Sean? Yeah, Peterson. From Sean okay. Peterson. Well, right, Alexis? Yeah, did you already get it? Uh, he had emailed me, and I met with him this past Friday morning to talk with him about it. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yep, so basically, we're this springtime, I will go through, and I'll hand throw a seat in the ditch. So. Okay. You'll, you'll help him this spring. Yep. And in winter, obviously, we can't do a lot. There's no, no. not much we can do. And, I, you know, and, the, and you're not going to get severe weather. It might be snow, but nothing that's going to wash something, probably. Hopefully not. You never know. But. No. But it, it, it was basically, so this will keep our road in good shape. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, yep, Dave, I actually I looked at this with Tanner, uh -huh. that we could potentially put a tube in there. Okay. But it would be like one of those rail car tubes. Okay. Well, and it, 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 would, it would need a lot of dirt work because it is such a big drop there. Okay. But it okay. doesn't carry the water that would require a bridge. But I know Mr. Bell said he did not want. If we put a tube in there, it would be considered a low water crossing, a vented one. And I know when he was in here a few months back, he said absolutely no to low water crossing. Oh, well, he did? I didn't think he said that. That's what he had said in the meeting was no, absolutely no to the low water crossing. He wants a bridge. So, well, can you talk to him again about it? Please? Yep, will do. Well, hopefully we can help him get something there. Okay. Yeah. And well, he's, we've got a project that we need his signature on. Right. And he, and he, had, he owns a lot of land on both sides, yep. so he'd probably let you use. Well, a different project that right. we we're trying to replace at right. Culver. Right, okay. It would raise the 100-year flood waters by one foot, so we need a flood plate easement okay. signed. We have the agreement from one landowner. The other owner, Mr. Bell, has not signed it yet. I don't believe he will sign it until we can come up with a solution for 240s and Jaguar. Okay. Yeah, well, please discuss that. Yep. Thank you. All right, Mr. Thank Vice you. Chairman, I recommend a two-minute pause while we wait on LaDonna thank to come you. to the table. Okay. Yeah, uh, Mr. Gableman requests a two-minute recess. Alexis. Two minutes to get up. Sure. Or five, five, let's make it five. Sure. Let's manner quick.
We got Donnie, you ready? I'm ready. Alexis, are you there? Yeah. Yes, I'm here. I'm good. Okay, uh, we're back. So Adonis here now. Yes. And uh, you can. I'm going to request to go into executive session for non elected yeah. personnel. Did you topic. hear Alexis? And the topic? Job duties. Yeah, we need a subject. Job duties. Job duties? Mm -hmm. Job duties? For a non-elected personnel? Within the health department? Yes. Okay. I'll make a motion to move to recess into executive session for, what, 10 minutes? 10 minutes. For 10 minutes for the purpose of discussing, what was it again, please? Job duties. Job duties for non-elected personnel in the health department. Pursuant to KSA 7543192B, uh, number one to discuss. Number per one. Right, number one to discuss personnel matters of non elected personnel. To reconvene in the uh, commissioner's room and in the courthouse when concluded. Who's to attend? What? Who gets to come to it? Oh, and to, uh, to be with the uh, LaDonna Ryder, the uh, health department director. The commission and the county clerk. She does that. She can take a break. Oh, okay. And for how many minutes would you like? Ten. For ten minutes. Ten minutes. Did you second? I second. Okay, the motion's been made and seconded to move into executive session for ten minutes. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you. Oh, no. Okay, next up would be Dawn Harlow. And she's got 50 seconds till she's on the chair. Are you there, Alexis? You still there? Yes. Yes, we, I'm here. We dropped on and off quite a bit on the uh, internet, so I wasn't sure. If it was phones. Or... Yeah, that's that's why I call. It. That's why I'm, I'm just on the list okay. line now. Okay. All right. Fine. Fine. Yeah. Do you guys want to do minutes before we start that, or? What were you? What were we gonna do with you? We're talking about human resources and what you guys want to do. Oh. Well, I, I don't need any more. What time? Break time or something? Or what? We have minutes. Oh, we got to do minutes. Yeah, I'm sorry. We, or if you want to start and do minutes after, or I've read the minutes and I find yeah, them well, acceptable. I vote or make a motion. We. I read the minutes. The minute. Don, there was one. Um, I don't have them open in front of me, but there was one little grammatical error. You might want to check. It was like the second to last paragraph or something. If you read through, but other than that, I didn't see anything. Okay. I make a motion. We approve with editorial correction. I'll second. I'll second. Then a motion made to approve the December 2016, or December the 16th, 2019 minutes and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. None opposed. We'll move on. Thanks, Don, for the minutes. I forgot all about it. Uh, now, we're, anything else we forgot? <laughs> I forgot. No idea. Um, we just need to discuss what you guys want to do um, about the human resource position. Well, I talked to you per personally last week, a little Don, about this. And I think we need a person to to uh, do that, I I don't I think it's difficult. We've tried this several times earlier this last year to hire a person, just to, for the HR job, just to be on their own to stay, start off. And if we want to get somebody very experienced or experienced, they're somewhat expensive and probably more budget than we can offer. And that, so I was thinking, and this is my opinion, and you guys can obviously disagree that we could try to maybe hire someone 
even full time, and I know Alexis, maybe you were thinking if we hired from someone for Don, it'd be part time, but full time in Don's office to be trained by Don and, and be for the lower budget price, kind of like a trainee, HR trainee to begin with, and helper for Don, and then as this person would get more and more experience, could maybe then in a year or what, how long transition to be total full H, the full HR person. Now that's just my opinion because I think we would need someone here to help out and to take over these HR responsibilities. We don't have 70,000, 50 to 70,000 to hire some of these qualified, very qualified people off the street. So that's my opinion. So Jim or Alexis, if you can, I'll listen to you guys' opinion here. Well, I've advocated that we hire someone much like you said to be an additional set of hands, a clerk in Dawn's office to do whatever she wants, to train her however much she wants. I do not think that person should be called an HR person. I think you can develop her into an HR if you like, but I think we need to hire a full-time helper for Dawn. Take over such things as you can uh, give her payroll after a period of time, whatever else you need to do. Alexis, do you have info there? Well, I'm going to sing the same song that I have been, which is if we're going to have someone who's responsible for employee files, employee complaints, and or commission directives, then that person should not work under another elected official. That being said, Dawn is the most qualified and experienced to do the training for things such as payroll, which would be one of the responsibilities for someone who's doing HR. It might be appropriate to consider a part-time position to be transferred into a full-time position once they are trained. I don't think it would be appropriate to just start off with a full-time position under Dawn's department. Um, that way, you know, it could be part-time while they're working for Dawn in training, and if they, if they are taking this job knowing that it's transitioning to full-time, at that time they would become an employee of the commission and their own HR department and then would no longer be responsible directly to Dawn. Well, the one issue I have made with part-time is that I don't know if we can get a, a good qualified person part-time uh, because it won't pay enough and probably won't have enough benefits. Well, we just said we're not, quali we're not hiring a qualified person because the whole point is to have them be trained. We're not, spending, we're not expending the money to get someone to come in to tell us how to do it. We're paying less money to train someone in our own system. Yeah. Uh. I mean, basically, all of our job descriptions say they expect that the person can be adept within six months. So if we hire part-time for six months, tell them this will transition into full-time after six months, that means you're getting someone who's willing to put in the time, even though it's not full-time, and then once they're trained, at that point in time after six months, they can earn their full-time position with benefits and such. And then their responsibility will shift from being an underling in the clerk's office to their own independent position. That would be the goal. Why not just hire full-time, though, Alexis, under Don, and then when that person, and then it still be under Don, and then when that person is trained, do a transition out of Don's department into an HR department where we'll be responsible to the commissioners. Because I don't think that we can delegate responsibilities to someone who's working for another elected official. At such time, when that person is fully trained in Don's office, when they are able to take on responsibilities that are assigned by our board, then, that, then they will need that additional time. Until then, if they're just doing payroll and learning general HR responsibilities with the occasional help of clerk duties, that's not. 40 hours. Well, I don't know. I think Don could use a 40-hour full-time person. 
because we got other departments that have more employees and look at the work Don does for us and her office does for us just with Hannah. I'm not I'm not trying to negate everything that Don does. However, I'm saying that payroll is three to four days at the end of the month. Many hours, but three to four days. And yeah, but, but that HR position is more than payroll. It's all the other issues that Don's dealing with. But they're not, going to be, they're not going to be performing that function as a sole individual until they're trained, and they're not going to be trained for six months. Yeah, but they have so to be there. They have to be there and hire and work and to get trained. And you've hired part time. Who are you going to get come part time? Uh, they won't pay enough and won't have benefits. You'll be unless you can get. Uh, maybe you could get somebody. I just don't see how you're going to get anybody good that we want in there. If you hire full time and don't pay, maybe a younger person and lesser pay. Yeah, with the with the upfront statement sure. saying you're going to be. Working here for Don, doing cork work and HR work combined, and then when you get qualified, you can transition to the HR fully on your own. What's wrong with that statement? I, Maybe I, I'm a I think what I suggested. I think. I think sometimes I fall on my own sword because I don't think you guys understand what all gets done behind the scenes. It's not just <coughs> issuing payroll checks <coughs> one day a week. That's the easy part, or one day a month. That's the easy part, I'm just gonna be honest with you. It's the day to day. Like, for example, we're going to have to do the W-2 reporting. We're going to, you know, let's just look at a month and, and this is the payroll side and, and you know if you all know how to do this well then you know I shouldn't have to be telling you this but let's just look at the month of January at the month of January we've got to do calculations on any employee that's time and a half their wage is over fifty thousand dollars because we have to report that as um, additional life insurance on their w-2 so then you have to modify all their w-2 Paul their w-2 files Anybody that had short-term disability throughout the year, you have to modify all of their W-2s to do that. That takes a week in itself just to make sure you're doing it right. And it takes a week in itself of uninterrupted, nobody bothering me. Because if you get interrupted, you forget where you're at and you make mistakes. So we have W-2 reporting. We have longevity reporting that we have to calculate what everybody owes or what everybody's going to get paid. We have to issue that paycheck out. If you guys are doing a pay raise in January, we still have to data enter all of that information. Then we get to our quarterly reports and we have to do the annual report. The annual report itself, just to get everything balanced once I got the W-2s done, probably took me about two weeks of time. And, and, and maybe a proficient person who that's the only thing they do wouldn't take that long, but to get everything balanced, it takes a while. Then you still have advertisements that need to be placed for employees or for positions that are open. You have interviews that you need to do. We have a huge thing that I just don't even know where to start with that we have to start reporting on a national level our drug test results so that any employer that takes one of our CDL employers can see what that is. That begins January 6th and I haven't even had a chance to look into that. I have to trans transition all of our our um, CDL drivers. They're using their social security numbers. We have to transition that into their driver's license. So right now I'm collecting driver's licenses. I sent that email out to the departments and I still don't have all the departments back, but I haven't really had time to sit down to figure out whose employees I'm missing and I'm not. Which we just decided it would be better to ask for every employee's driver's license so then we're getting them updated because honestly we don't do that on a regular basis. That's something the employee could be doing is, is those minute little things. So in February we will um, be finishing because all of your annual reports have to be in by the end of January now. But then we also have the compliance for the Healthcare Portability Act that we have to make sure we get the notifications. And with the transition of the health insurance companies, I'm not sure the state's doing that reporting for us this year or if we if it was part of their last year. So I need to figure that out. 
but in the month of February, then it kind of slows down just a little bit and we will basically be doing payroll. But at that time, we're going to try to audit the, we try to audit back the leave time to make sure we didn't mess up somebody's leave time books. And um, because as you know, everybody loses their leave time if it's over 80 hours, which how you guys have done it has helped us in that standpoint. Um, March, we'll do payroll. We'll get back to um, a quarterly report will be due, which will be due in the end. So your, your March is your end of your quarter, so you'll be doing that in April. But in the meantime, you guys have evaluations. I don't know when you want department heads to start with that, but we've got to get it out. And again, you're still advertising for employees. You're still setting up interviews. You're still doing the day-to-day -day work. And you continue on then if you guys do a payroll like so last year you did a january increase and then you did a july increase what you guys don't realize is i have to touch 70 employees files not only in the computer but then in their personnel file as well and that takes time to do every single employee and i'm not saying that's a bad thing that's why i kind of suggested maybe it'd be easier if we did based upon their anniversary date so you're not doing everybody all at once um, we will have a nice thing this year that we don't have an increase in your health insurance premium in July because otherwise you had to touch everybody's in it file to, to update that dollar amount as well. Um, so then we'll get to the end of the, basically back to the end of the year. And what we're doing this month right now is employee deductions. Like uh, Brittany came up and between Brittany and myself on Sunday, we spent, um, well, not Sunday, Saturday, she spent two and a half hours and I spent another two and a half hours just getting ready to build the health insurance files because we had to start from scratch and build brand new entries. Well, nobody really stops and thinks about the aspect of we offer two plans. Each of those two plans has four tiers. That's eight plans that I had to build into the system. Then you have four different um dental plans, so that's 12. Then we offered three different vision plans times four, so that's another 12. I was entering in 24 new deductions, plus then we had HSA and um, uh, FSA accounts that we had to create. So to make sure that you do everything appropriately and, and get it, and I don't have a health insurance bill to bill to, so I'm kind of taking what they gave me and we got all of that data entered, and then Brittany and Brittany today were proofing that to make sure that we are where we're supposed to be at. Now I have employees that are off, that they have employee spouse plans on everything else, but they only have single on certain things, so we need to contact those employees and make sure that's really what they wanted, or was there an error on the, on the uh, health management company. There's just... So those are the types of things that we work with. That's just payroll part of it. That's not the employees in coming in the door and I have this issue or I have this concern that I need help with. Or department heads, I have an issue that I don't know how to deal with and I need your help. Or a department head that comes in that says, I have this happening and I don't know who to call. And so you contact attorney assist because you just want to make sure that you're telling them the right information. And I just, I don't think that you guys realize the right person can make this a 40 hour day. And that's not even making sure that the department heads are doing their evaluations. That's not updating the handbook. That's not creating policies. I, and I don't know what you guys want from this person, but in my realm and what I envision, we want them to do everything. And, and if you guys say, I want a policy, the number one complaint is that we don't follow policy consistently. Well, I try, I attempt the best that I can, you know, and I got called evil last week, evil, because I am enforcing your guys' policies. Which policy? Um, that one was the non-paid time because all of the highway department guys would like to not get paid for their two hours of their 10 hour holiday time. So, you know, you guys agreed to let them go back to four 10 hour days but they only get eight hours of holiday. So how do they get the other two? They have to use their leave time. They don't want to do that. They want to use their unpaid leave time. So we give them 40 hours a week when they have exhausted all of their other benefits, or sorry, 40, 40 hours a year after they've exhausted all of their benefits. Well, they want to use their two hours. And I said, no, 
Our policy says you have to exhaust all of your benefits before you kick into that 40 hours of unpaid policy, uh, of unpaid leave time. And they're upset yeah, about that. I mean, that's, that's a circumstance of wanting a 10 hour, four day work week. I mean, that, that's, those are some of the things that come with it. You can't, you can't have, yeah, that's, that's not your fault. It's, it's, it's not being consistent, you know, and, and then I was told today or not today, but last week I was told that they wanted to know why I wasn't letting them because they had employees that were using unpaid leave time. And I said, I know of one employee in two instances. The first month I realized it because I'm not, I'm not doing the leave book. I've been having Brittany Heald do that just to help me save time. And she didn't realize that she was supposed to alert me when somebody dropped below 12. Because, okay, if employee A has 12 hours of leave time and that's all that they have, and they, uh, they get their paycheck, they only have 12 hours to use for the following month if they've exhausted all their benefits. Well, we had an employee that had put in non-paid leave time where the supervisors had, and our system paid it as leave time. So it reduced his leave time to 11 hours. And he called and he said, well, I um, should only have this many, or I should have this many hours left of unpaid leave that I can use. And um, Hannah was like, no, she didn't have anything. And come to find out, that's what we did. So in the month of November, because it was crunch time, I forgot to pay attention to that. So I have fixed that. So when it's coded that in the time clock system and it comes to us, it's not automatically paying them as leave time. So that part of it has been fixed. But I was, was told last week that multiple employees have been able to use their non-paid leave time without exhausting their benefits. And I said, that's not true. And they said, yes, it is. And you were evil because of this. They think that you were evil because of this. And I said, then you need to provide me their names and when they supposedly did that, because I said, I'll fix it. And I said, sure. Did they try? Absolutely. They try. They try to do it all the time. But we say no, I'm sorry, and we normally tell their supervisor that they need to let the employee know, and it's a potential that the supervisor never bothered to tell the employee. But those are the types of things. So, like, if that occurs, then the person has to research and figure out what, what happened, did we do this, did we make a mistake, how do we fix it? And I told, I told the supervisor that told me that, I said, I'm sorry that your employees think that I'm evil. They need to be reminded that I don't enact the policy, I just enforce the policy. And if they have an issue, they need to take it to the people that enact the policy, which is you guys. And I don't know, are employees saying anything to you guys? Because... No, I haven't heard anything. No. Not me. Well, let's go back to HR. I'd like to propose a motion, if I may. I move we hire an entry-level full-time person to work for the county commission. Uh, sorry, the county clerk to learn any HR duties as determined by the county clerk. The expectation is that after said, after some period of time, to be set by the county clerk in coordination with the BOCC to become the HR position and to be an HR directorate under the BOCC. The county clerk will determine a, st a starting salary and job qualifications for the advertisement. No second that. We have to take him in while she figures out what I wrote. Go ahead, Alexis. Yeah, can we re, re can can we have the motion read? Yeah, as soon as she types it in, I'll read it again. Her Latin and Greek skills are a little off here today.
with your pen. Oh, sorry. And I said, I move we hire an entry-level full-time person to work for the county clerk to learn any HR duties as determined by the county clerk. The expectation is that after some period of time to be set by the county clerk with coordination with the BOCC to become the HR position and to be an HR director under the BOCC. The county clerk will determine a starting salary and qualifications for the advertisement. Yeah, and I seconded that, Alexis. Did you hear it all? I, I did, and I, under the discussion, <clears throat> I'd like to point out a few things. Go for it. Okay, number one, if you're basically giving Dawn the reins on this, then she doesn't need a motion from us to do that. If, you're, if you are allowing her to do all of that, which... I'm not opposed to it at this point, I'm just pointing this out, then she needs to be doing that with her own budget, and therefore you, we've already segregated the HR budget from her. So she needs to be put in authority of the HR budget, because she doesn't have the money in her budget to hire someone, number one. Number two, if you're giving Dawn all of that above authority, as far as determining and everything else, then you're basically giving her the hiring power. And again, that comes back to expending the money, which then you need to move the HR budget into the clerk budget to do that. Um, so what, you're, what I'm hearing you say is we want to delegate this entire responsibility to Dawn. And if you want to, that's fine, but she needs the money to do it. And right now we have moved that money out of her office into a separate budget over which we have the authority. So really the motion should just be that we are – putting the HR budget back under the clerk and letting her deal with it. And then, I mean, you're not even putting a time restriction on it. I would like it to see, I would like to see six months or something. You know, she has six months to train this person and then they will establish their own, um, their own office. So basically what we're doing is we're giving Dawn, we're giving another elected official, official authority over the HR budget because eventually you're saying you expect the HR to be an independent um, department. That's correct. And as far as a period of time, rather than put six months in, which we had mentioned, I said to be set by the county clerk with coordination with us, because it might be that we get somebody that can pick it up in three months and somebody that might take longer than six. So if the county clerk determines the appropriate time to make that uh, hire an HR, then we can do it at that time in coordination with the so then I, I would propose that I, I would propose that we vote this mo motion down because really it's just us telling her what to do instead of delegating the authority. The authority is the money. I think we need a new motion that just says we authorize the county clerk authority over the HR budget until she trains a person and determines that they can be their own department head. At that time, they will have control of their own budget, which will be directly under the county commission. I think it comes down to money because, I mean, are, are, you in, are you supposed to be part of the interview process or are you leaving that all up to the clerk's office? No. Uh, what I would do is uh, leave my motion as such and just uh, add additional saying transferring the HR money to the county clerk until such time as the HR person can assume the position of HR. So all the rest of that stuff is I mean, in are, there. Are, are you are you going to are we going to do as we did before and look at the applications and be part of the interviews, or are you leaving that all to the county clerk? I'd let the county clerk interview. We're not we're not going for a department here. I think head. what you're really doing I think what you're really doing is you're saying that you're giving the HR budget over to the authority of the clerk, and okay. then she can do what she wants. Until That's, such time as that it. HR position uh, becomes a full-time position under us. That's that's what we said. After some period of time to be set by the county clerk with coordination with the Board of County Commissioners to become the HR position and to be an HR director to whatever under the county commissioners. We got that. So, so is this person, person going to make less money while they're training? and sure. then come into a full-blown salary once they're qualified? I would expect, yeah. And that depends, again, on how we set up our 
uh, pay scale. But yeah, we want an entry level person to come in at entry level uh, pay until such time as they become fully qualified to be in HR. Then we'll have to talk about the HR salary. But yeah, I would not expect that to be uh, the same as an entry level, no. We got a question from Cindy. Cindy. Um, I was <clears throat> hoping after I talked last week that maybe somebody would do some research on what HR is in, in Kansas and what counties have HR positions, which they all do. And what I hear you saying is you're doing away with that position and putting more work on the county clerk to train an HR person, which that is a degree that is by itself and stands by itself in every county. You've got to pick up the phone. You can even read it. Most of them have it online of what they require an HR person to do. The other thing that's concerning to me is I said that I thought Don needs a full-time clerk that helps with the clerk duties, period. That's already a full-time elected position, and she needs that help in that office so that it runs smoothly for the whole county. The HR position is what does the hiring and the recommendations and all of those things that you guys have not completed, can't agree on what to do on it, and really, I can't see much qualification on even making the decision of what an HR position is at this point in time. Because it is, I mean, look it up. And the main medium salary in Kansas for an HR person is 38000 I don't know where you're getting this information from, but I really would require you to research before you go out on a limb here. The HR position is a position that could stand freely by itself. Whether you make it half-time or full-time is really at your discretion. But a clerk is needed in the clerk's office. Yeah, we know, Cindy. We've been through this. We've been through this. It, it seems we've been through like this. you haven't been. Because we've been. You're we, not we, learning from your past experience. We've we tried to interview people all this last summer from all different realms. And you changed the recommendations of what you qualified. At one point in time, there was a minimum of an HR degree, a bachelor's degree. And there's yeah, we I can't mean, afford you, we can't afford fifty what, what seventy can't thousand. You, the medium salary of people with bachelor's degree because like we don't have the budget. Because we don't have the budget for it. We don't have thirty six thousand. Well, maybe budget we, for that position. Uh, we may eventually, but we're right now. We're we tried to hire off the street reputable HR people, and they're wanting more than thirty eight thousand. So anyway, but anyway, thank allow you. Allow me to allow me to correct the misinformation. Go ahead. Not all other. Not all other counties have an independent HR. In fact, Marion County, which is much larger than ours, still does everything in the clerk's office. That's not a justification for us to leave the responsibility on Don's shoulders. We have a person However, assigned to just HR in Marion County. Well, anyway. Excuse me? They have a person that's assigned to do just HR and it has what their duties are on their website. Well, anyway, let's get back to the discussion we had here. Jim has a motion on the table. I seconded it. Now, Alexis brought up good points on should we, uh, about the budget. Really, we have an HR budget. And, uh, and if we're going to use that budget, if we would vote for this motion Jim passed, would uh, then the budget of the HR go in their Don's office until this person is that we deem credible to move on on their own as an HR person. But Alexis, you were saying maybe we should vote, vote this motion down and then maybe just make a motion to have Don have the authority with the HR budget and then hire a person, like Jim stated, and then with that HR budget, use that budget and train a new person and then when deemed six, that this person could go on their own as an HR on uh, their own. Is that what you were saying earlier, Alexis? I, I guess what I'm saying is the commission's ultimate responsibility is the money. And we have not addressed the money in this motion. And really what we're doing is we're transferring authority of the HR budget to the clerk. That's what we're really doing. Because if we're not going to be part of the hiring and the interviewing and the, the cultivating of this position, if that's all left to the clerk, then really we, we owe nothing more to the process than to delegate the dollar amount that goes along with it. Because if we're not, and that's fine, if the, if the board votes that we're not going to be directly responsible for this person until they're trained by someone that we're telling to train them, or, or whoever, if Don's accepting to, to take this on, then 
we, we don't need to determine anything. We're basically saying everything's up in the air until Dawn gives us the go. Then we get a new employee in a new department. So in order for that to happen, she has to have authority over the money is what I'm saying. We haven't addressed the HR budget money, and that's really our only authority in this particular position. Okay. So why don't you amend this motion to move the HR money into the county clerk's account? Yeah, well, it would be under. It's a separate. It's a separate line item. We've already. We've already approved the budget, so it was basically. I think we just need a separate motion. I, okay. I call for a vote. Okay. I call for a vote on the motion as it is. All right. Uh, we have a motion made by Jim, and we know what it is. Basically, to have. Uh, we put an application for, for, a trainee, basically HR, to work under Don's office until. And uh, we seconded that op motion. Now I'll call for a vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. All in favor say nay. 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 Okay, motion failed. Now we can have another motion that actually does similar thing. That, uh, like I agree with Alexis, that we could have a motion to actually transfer the budget, HR budget, to Don's. County clerk authority. I, I would say basically have the same motion to have a the application for uh, an HR person that the uh, under the county clerk would interview and hire and have the authority. I'm going, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and make the motion. Okay, yeah, you do it, Alexis. So you, you're I'm more confused here than what <laughs> you are. So go ahead. Okay, I move. To authorize the Lincoln County Clerk authority over the human resources budget to effectively hire, train, and establish an independent human resource office. Is that it? That is it. Well, I think, don't you want some time in there? How are you going to determine when this? No, no we left it open. No, at, this, at this point, well, I need a second. In the oh, I'll second that. Okay, the motion's been made a second to uh, transfer the HR budget to the county clerk's office, and then county clerk will do what Alexis just I said in her motion. I guess what I'm trying to say is our authority is over the money. If Dawn is going to be responsible for choosing and cultivating and hiring and deciding when that person is ready, et cetera, et cetera, we really don't need to be a part of that process then. You know, if we're not going to personally be doing these interviews, selecting candidates, giving them our expectations, we're basically saying Dawn's the authority on the situation. She needs the money. You know, she needs to have access to that budget to make it work. Let's just hand it over then. Do we not have an end time, a sunset clause to that? I mean, no, because if, I mean, I'm going along with what you're suggesting. If I had my way, we'd be training someone. There's no way that Dawn can spend 40 hours of her week training. So I don't see how someone's going to be in there 40 hours a week training, but that's fine. Let her deal with it. If she wants to train them and, and utilize their work for other things in her office while she's busy and can't be directly training, Fine. How are we going you know, to know? We can't when we're going to, how are we going to know when it's time to set up a human resources office under the county commissioner and out away from the county? Clerk? Well, I think our county clerk will inform us that she thinks this new hire would, is ready to go on their own. I think that'd be a request from us. And when that person, kind of like we had Deborah before, she was doing HR stuff, and when we then when they get ready to go on their own, I think Don can tell us. Then we could maybe Well, get... this, this is why I this is why I notated it as an independent department. It, it, the, the idea is she is, the county clerk now, is responsible for establishing an independent department separate from her because I don't see the benefit in keeping it in the clerk's office. However, yeah. she's going to need to use human resources funding to get that all set up. Well, and we're using, the clerk's office is doing the HR job now and using HR resources now. We're doing it now, anyway. 
So we we might as well, well give. She's, she's paying herself. She's paying herself because she's a payroll. So she's paying herself out of. We already made a motion to allow that. Remember, right? We had to physically allow her to pay herself out of the HR budget to to perform that job duty. So now what I'm saying is. Give her free reign of the HR budget and let her establish the HR department, and we pull ourselves out of the process. If we're not doing the interviewing anyhow, what does it matter? We're basically going to be told, "Hey, I've trained this person; she's ready to be in her he she's ready to be in the office we set up down the hall. We already established the the money the money and the the actual funds for HR, so that's all we really need to do at this point. If we're not satisfied with the work performance at a later date." then that needs to be discussed with the board. But until then, we're not going to be part of establishing the department then. I agree. That's fine. I... Anyway, we got a motion and a second to uh, for the motion that Alexis stated about transfer of the uh, budget to of the HR department to Don's office. That Don would hire a person and... Uh, well, we have a question from the crowd first. Okay. Sorry. Did you guys ask Dawn if she wanted to do this? If she had time to do this? Well, what do you think, Dawn? Do you not want to do this or no? Trying to choose good words. I think that human resources okay. are not my statutory duty. It scares me a little bit because Cindy is right. There are people out there that are professionally trained, and I'm going to be training somebody, and I feel like I'm never ever going to be able to get them to the standards in which this board might feel is appropriate. Um, I mean, I can send them to classes, and I know I need help. And if it's not that you guys want to have an HR person that you hire in, then this is the <coughs> realm that we need to go. Again, it's outside of my statutory duties. Did we do it before in the past? Yes. I'm just... I'd rather us be a team and make that decision on a person together and make a transition period and honestly I don't have the time to train somebody but maybe if I had another hand in the office I would have I, I just well you need help you gotta have somebody I, I need help one way or another even if we hire a... even if it's just we start with payroll and then we grow yeah grow well that's what my, my intention is to do that to have hire to hire somebody for you, and then it's going to take time. Because if we just hire an HR person directly, that's okay too. But you're still going to have to train them too, to know what Lincoln County does here. So you can call them whatever you want. HR have their own department. I would, like to, I would like to interject. I would like to interject. There are many, many professional resources for HR training when it comes to dealing with employees, employment law, et cetera, et cetera. What Dawn has specialty knowledge of is not necessarily what someone learns in college for human resources. What Dawn knows are the intricacies of the Lincoln County system, which is our context system, our time clock, where our files are, what employment history is, what our policies are, what our handbook says. The the things that are particular to Lincoln County is where Dawn ha has her wealth of knowledge. You can't hire someone with a PhD who's going to have that information. It's particular to the environment. So I don't care if we bought or paid for the best HR person that we could find. They're still not going to know our own context. That's true. That's right. That's what I keep saying. That's what, that's okay, what so, so, so whoever Dawn, we get has got to be trained. you're worried... I'm just... Don, if you're worried about the actual HR function of employee files, employment law, um, you know, COBRA, and et cetera, et cetera, if you're worried about those things, you need to definitely delegate that and say, here, these, these are your training requirements. You have to take two classes in the next three months. I, 
think that would be very appropriate. And then it takes the responsibility off of your shoulders. You don't need to teach the HR person employment law. They need to be able to take the classes and get their own certification. Okay. What yeah. What yeah. is, so, if I'm listening to everybody correctly, your end all goal is to have a separate HR position. I think so. That's my goal. By the time we get this done. Uh, isn't that what you would like to do? What, what is it that you want this position to do in the interim besides just payroll? So we have the evaluation process that's coming up. Are you going to weigh that on this person as we're training them right now? Or is that something you're going to, to talk to the department heads heavy on and make that their responsibilities? And then as the department heads get through the evaluation process, then this HR person can kind of step in and help learn with it. Does that make sense? Or are you expecting this person to know everything right off the bat? Like, is this person going to be helping do the handbook? Or are you going to hold off to updating the handbook until this person is hired? Um, those types of things. I just don't want to set somebody up for failure. Well, I think a lot of that would be up to you. We're we turn in the authority over because you're doing the HR now. You know what needs to be done. So I think you would be the best person to instruct the new hire, whoever that is, who really should learn. I need help on this, and I need help on this, and please learn this. I think it's up to you to have to do it. I, I, I well, maybe Alexis and Jim know more about HR than I do, but I'm gonna tell them what to do. Don, you know what to do. That's why I would. That's why I was wanting it under your office to begin with, to learn and teach from. And then once they learn more and more and more, they can be less reliant on you. Okay, so let's say this. When we have a conflict that occurs, well, let's say, for example, now Brendan never mentioned this, but this will be a good example. So Brendan had mentioned to me that one of the places that he had worked for allowed for a modified work schedule during the weeks in which there was holidays that they only got eight hours if they were working 10 hour shifts. So basically it would be Tuesday and Wednesday would be an hour, they would work an hour extra, so instead of 10 hours they would work 11. I honestly don't have an issue with that, but that's not a decision for me to make. That I feel like that's a decision for you guys. Do you guys agree with that or do you guys agree that it's my decision to make? Where, I just want to kind of feel out what it is that you guys are, are wanting permission over and what you're not wanting permission over. In other words, what's an HR decision and what's a permission? Yes, decision? like if, if a department head doesn't like my answer. So, for example, I said, no, I'm sorry, but the employees can't use the, the two hours of non-paid leave time. They have to use their leave time. There is no other choice. Is the answer still that they will come to you guys and make policy, or do you expect the person to come on behalf of, and be the person that's asking you guys, um, what roles are the department heads going to have? What roles is this person going to have? Is this person going to be above the department heads and have the department heads coming and talk to, talking to them? Or are we waiting until they're actually a separate entity before that occurs? And I don't know if I even made any sense. I would like to see that person have regular sessions with the commission, maybe once a month, come in and talk about what they're learning, what their expectations are, because it's also a learning process for the board to have a separate division. I mean, I think you've done this in your department to the best of your abilities for a long time, and it's, it's gotten to the point where it needs some fine-tuning, and that's going to have to be someone who takes the initiative to do it themselves. Okay. Yeah, I agree with Alexis on that, too. I, I, guess, I guess, Don, maybe I am a little confused. If I heard correctly, I believe it was um, Sharon Doe asked, did we ask you if you want that responsibility? Because I am, with my motion, suggesting that we basically hand over the finances to you so that you can do as you wish with the hiring and the cultivating of this position. Is that something that you, I mean, I feel like you've kind of suggested both things. You know, you said, well, I want it, I want it out of my office because I do think it would run more efficiently, which I agree. 
but I, there is this transition period where you're you're doing it now. So how do we get it out of your office onto its own feet? I, and that's why I feel like I'm very wishy-washy, and I, I know that I am, and that's not fair to you guys either. I struggle because I just want it out of my office. I want the responsibility. I want everybody who's angry to stop being angry at me. Um, but, but I, I, I worry sometimes that I tell the supervisors the wrong information. I don't sleep at night because I worry whether or not their paychecks are going to hit the bank because I don't know if I've screwed up the direct deposit. Those are the types of things that I want to get off of my shoulders because I literally do get up at 6 a.m. to see whether or not my paycheck is in the bank because if my paycheck's not in the bank, then I know everybody else's is not either. Uh, I just, I don't, I don't know what the answer is. But I don't want this person to be attacked every time they turn around. I don't want to play the I'm your boss, they're not your boss card. I think we need to come down to some kind of agreement that we can work together as a team rather than being, you know, angry and territorial. And But I want this person to be successful and I feel like they're not going to be successful if we don't hire somebody that has had formal training, if that makes sense. Um, and I don't know, I'm going to take a class this semester on employment law, which will hopefully maybe refresh some of the employment law so that maybe I feel more confident in giving answers. But I know we have a, a ton of resources out there that I think that we can do this. I just, I don't want something else to fail. Well, <laughs> and right now I feel like a failure. I mean, I, I just, I'm doing the best that I can. There is so much more this position can do. May I ask, do you feel confident in selecting someone and training them to do, not to do, I, I'm not asking if you can train them in employment law. I'm asking, do you feel confident in selecting someone and training them in context? in our time clock system, in showing them where our employee files are, getting them acclimated to Lincoln County, not to the HR world, to Lincoln County. Yes, specific. yes. To, to our local policies, yes. Yeah, that's really... To really do really quarterly reports... Someone who has... Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Well, I mean, it's unfortunate because our, our last, we kind of just dismissed our last round of applicants and really what we're doing is we're starting from scratch saying, hey, we're willing to train you, but we are still looking for someone who's familiar with FMLA, who's familiar with CAPERS to some extent or any kind of retirement program, who's familiar with the different, you know, the different types of um, health benefits that we're hiring. You know, we do want someone with some general knowledge. We cannot just take a a secretary from the, you know. I would almost say the person know. needs to have some kind of payroll experience. It may not need to be <laughs> right. Deduction. Actually, doing they need payroll. To have the general knowledge. Yes. Uh, well, that'd be up to you if we you when know, you interview them, Don. To, to, I uh, as a prerequisites for what you would like, I think. And we could be involved in it, too. When, I think the commissioners and you could interview them. If, uh, I mean, I, I don't think it okay. has to be either or. Uh, excuse me, but just I'm going to call for a point of order on our process here. I'm going to withdraw my motion. I move to withdraw my motion um, so that we can just continue this discussion. I think we're not really ready to either transfer all the responsibility to Dawn or have a cut and dry agreement. I think all four of us, meaning the three commissioners and Dawn, this week should write down what our expectations are on paper. Because I think we could have this conversation for another hour and not really have it all hash out. Well, we've had it for a year since I've been a commissioner and it hasn't been hashed out. It's a complex issue because, you know, what do you, you know, what we've been through this back and forth. I know. And I know that people like think of 
oh, well, it's just payroll. It's, it's not. It's broader than that. And you're right. dealing with people's lives and their personalities. And, you know, part of the reason why I haven't said I'm not doing payroll anymore and I'm just tired and I'm done is because there are 80 employees who rely on me to get their paycheck in the account so that they can pay their bills. And I... Although I want to be hard and callous and say I don't care, at the end of it, I do care. I do care about them. They may not think I do. They may think that I'm evil at times when I have to tell them no on certain aspects. And, and I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong in that. Maybe I'm wrong in saying, in answering those questions, and maybe I should be saying, you need to talk to the commissioners about that. Maybe I've overstepped my boundaries when people ask questions I, I i'm not sure but i would like it to be a team effort if the overall goal is to have this person be out and be independent on their own and okay can we come to the agreement between the commission and the clerk that we want hr to be an independent office that's a foregone conclusion or, or is that or is that still in question never been in question, has it? Well, yeah, I think it is. Well, I don't know. It has been. I've got confused more I, because sometimes we think it's, we want it to be an independent position, and other times we say it's operating now in the county clerk's office with maybe help because that's what you've been doing. So I, we go back and forth. So I don't know what the hell I, what they want or anymore. Cindy's got a question. Cindy. This was just brought up last week, and, and, and I think it's a very good question to ask, you have a budget person you're paying a lot to do uh, payroll. And how does that all add in? I mean, when I sat here in the meeting, I thought that was going to be lifting a lot of, of uh, extra time out of the clerk's office. And it really doesn't sound like that turned out to be. So maybe that needs to be reevaluated. I'm not sure. Don would know more about, is that, that what is it, 1500 a month, 1200 a month? that you're paying this person to do payroll doesn't really uh, benefit management. Benefit management. Yeah. yeah I'm not say, sure that it's not payroll. It's managing. Benefit. Yeah. I'm not sure it's a benefit to Don. <laughs> I think it will be once it gets going. I, I okay. feel like right now it's my worst enemy, but it's kind of like they probably, if they listened to the video and heard me say what I've said, they're probably like, oh my gosh, she's calling me evil out in the public and she's offended by the highway department calling her that. Um, but, oh, excuse me, I well, was supposed to tell which department. When I was here and they decided to do that, it sounded like it was going to take a lot of uh, responsibility out of the clerk's office and that would free up your time more. But I'm not sure that that's it's happened not, or will it happen. It's now. not happened, and I keep thinking it's going to happen, but then the other parts of me is saying, is it not happening because you're a control freak and you're used to doing it and it's just easier to get it well, to I do it and get it done <laughs> and but yeah I mean I've been, I've been struggling with that because yeah. I feel like I thought when we hired them I didn't know that I was gonna have to call individuals and even today I'm, I'm calling individuals I called two today because we caught <coughs> two discrepancies with the health insurance billing that they sent us so they sent us a spreadsheet with what everybody's um, selections were and what their share of the premium is supposed to be I didn't know what our share of the premium was supposed to be so I kind of had to figure that out figure out which spreadsheet was the last spreadsheet that was the current price I, I don't know that I've not seen anything from the companies that have firm figures as to what it is um, you know she had you sign something but she didn't give me a copy of it and I thought it was in my packet, but it was not in my packet. And I, don't, I still don't even have signed contracts back. And I should have signed contracts that say what the premium is going to be. And so those are the things. But it's like, and I've emailed her. I emailed her last Thursday, last Friday, no replies. I emailed her again today. And when I get done with you guys, I'm going to actually pick up the phone. But I thought, well, while I'm here with you guys, if she can get to my emails, you know, that might be the quicker route. You asked her directly, too, when you were interviewing for certain people, or not interviewing, but looking at different bids or whatever. Would she be, or would the company be, sitting down individually with each person? That didn't seem to happen. 
It did not happen. I, I don't, did you go to the open enrollment meeting? No, but at she, all? in the interview process when we selected Vic, she did say that she would interview personally every person That's right. every year. Okay. And what did you guys have happen at that benefit enrollment? Well, I talked to people. They helped me fill out mine. Uh, when I was there, you were there. Mm -hmm. I, I just asked them what I needed to do. I, you know, I'm pretty straightforward and went through the simple You're thing. a straightforward person. Yeah. <laughs> some a lot of people are not. Yeah, with families. Some of them are not. And if you do HSA, and I know it's more complicated. But, but this is what they did. They stood up and they gave a presentation. And then they said... Here, or they had already given you your form that was pre-filled out. So what does a lot of people do when you do that? They start filling out the form. Right. Well, then as they were walking through the form, they really didn't walk through the form and say, this is what we want you to do if you select. After they gave their presentations, they were like, okay, so, uh, complete your form and sign it. Well, on the front side of the form, there was, I want a the health insurance, and I want family, single, employee, child, uh, employee spouse dental i want the four options vision that had the the three options and the three levels selected okay so you the employees marked that then they got to the back side and on the back side it lists your dependent information and then it has the same thing health insurance vision so so some of them didn't even fill out the back side of it so what they called me about is like they selected family on the front but they didn't select anything on the back side and I was like, I didn't even think about that. I didn't even look at that. I mean, it was kind of redundant. And that form was a form that I would say it was a generic form that is used for to do all of the enrollment. It wasn't actually what the Blue Cross Blue Shield enrollment form was in each individual okay. standpoint. So I can see where the confusion. So like today's confusion part of it was we have employee A which we would have never ever caught had I not put a filter on their spreadsheet and told, told my daughter, filter it by this and then see if they match up. But we had an employee who is an employee spouse that enrolled in the health insurance, the dental and the vision, supposedly for employee spouse, but does not have employee spouse on the dental. It only has employee. So now I need to see, and I looked at his form, it's correct. So now they need to see if they can still get the spouse enrolled. It's pass open enrollment. Anyway, let's go back to Alexis asked about this HR position, whether we want to have a full time <coughs> position, right, Alexis? You still there? Yeah, I'm here, and I think I'm going to re suggest that each of the three commissioners and Don put down, you know, we're allowed to email or whatever, put down your thoughts on how it's to be separated or what the expectations are. We can rediscuss it, you know, at, at the next meeting. Nothing's going to happen between now and then. I'm sure Dawn is frantically working on the end of the year stuff. We're going to have W-2s and everything else. I know she's trying to process quarterly reports, et cetera. Um, so, even, so really hiring someone in the next few weeks isn't even an option anyhow. There's not going to be that right. kind of time. So maybe we really need to get it on paper, what the expectations are, what some time frames are, and how much overlap there is between the commissioners and the county clerk as far as oversight of this position. Yeah, sounds fine to me. Jimmy, you have any input? No, I read you right. I wrote the note and, down to do this. And you rescinded your uh, motion, didn't you, Alexis? So we'll just yes. for I today we we'll leave it off the table. So for today we won't decide anything. Like you said, we should uh, come with our opinion on what we think we need again for the HR position, if we need an HR position or whatever. I think what should happen is each individual commissioner should only email Don. So don't don't email one another, but write down your thoughts and your expectations for the HR position. Send it to Don. Dawn can absorb what the three of us are saying and come up with her own reaction to that, and then she can present it to all three of us. Is that okay with you, Dawn? Yes. I think that's the only way to really start getting it on paper, because we all have a slightly different idea of how this is going to work, and yeah, we're well, basically invent, you know. Well, it's complex. To, you know, you, there are different options what you can do. We've been through this, and I don't know if one's better than the other or whatever. 
Well, can I just throw out there, I was going to tell you guys if you guys didn't make a decision by January 15th, I was going to advertise. So can we make that our ultimate goal is that we will advertise something by January 15th. We will come up with a, a job description, what our intentions are and everything, and we will put the ad in on January 15th. And my thought was, was advertise through the rest of January with the intentions of hopefully hiring somebody by February 1st or shortly after. I like that, but Madam Chairman, I'd like another point of order. Instead, okay. of, instead of withdrawing your motion, I move we table your motion. That will require us at the next meeting to take that uh, take action on that. Okay, is that called table or suspend? I table, can't remember. Table it. Okay. And that requires you to address that action at the very next meeting. So do we need to vote on the motion to table? Yes, we do. Okay, we have a motion to table the the previous motion that Alexis made. All in favor say aye. You got it seconded first. Well, I'll you, second it. There's a second. And then I'll vote aye. All in favor say aye. 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 Jim said aye. Motion carried. Not opposed. So we will table that as you say. Yeah, and then we have to address that at the next meeting according to the Robert Rules and Order and the other thing we do. And Don still wanted to know if we could have some type of well, I think we agree to that and because we've tabled this that gives us the authority to go ahead and do you agree that, that we should have some type of ad by the fifteenth of January, Alexis? Absolutely, sure. Yeah, I agree, Don, you go with so some type of ad. Maybe we'll determine that in the next meeting what okay. what best way to pursue this. See that's well, we okay. the issue. All right. Any other, uh, well, we're done with the agenda, I guess. Uh, any other business, Don or Alexis or Jim? I really maybe need to, um, I really need an executive session, but I really don't know if it's executive session. So um, I <coughs> would like the opportunity to talk about The issues with the time clock system, mm -hmm. department heads, roles and responsibilities, and just particular things that I am seeing on the time clock system that I feel like we need I direction. I think if it, pertains, if it pertains to any one particular employee, it's definitely executive session. I feel like it without, it's too hard to explain to generalize without the, yeah, it, it, the discussion of the person. Yeah, if there's a specific example, then I, it definitely needs to be executive session. And then I still would like to discuss again the Sylvan Ambulance um, volunteers and the pay and a solution or where the status of that is. Okay. Um, well, let's talk about that first because that's not executive session. That has to do with paying them. Well, Alexis, did... How do we resolve? Did you contact Derek after last week? Uh, he supposedly has... I did not I did not get a chance to talk okay. to him, so I apologize. Well, that, is, well, that's, that is my fault. Well, you were out of town, I know it's... Well, Alexis, who's remember our last meeting, was going to talk to Derek about he probably has records or time. Maybe he has time. He was, records. We, I, and I will. He needs to tell them to collect or or delegate to someone to collect their hours, so that Dawn doesn't have to collect the information and calculate the pay. She can just get the hours received and calculate the pay. You want me That's to you want me to contact him on that? Since I know you're busy and out of town, Alexis, I can do that. I'm going to be a little on the cynical side here, um, but when have I ever held my tongue, right? What if we would just pay them a flat rate and be done with it? Now, I'm sure that would make the director's life wonderful, and he would say, that's cool, 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 and <coughs> that would just take Hello. care of it. But I just don't feel like it's going to get resolved by Thursday when I need it. Are you there? She, she dropped off, I guess. What 
why don't you call Larry and tell him that we've got to have it right, uh, set will, up on well, Thursday morning or they're not going to get paid. Right, well, I'll ask him I'll call him. I know she's, she's got to do it Thursday, and if we don't have the information, we can't pay. And it's if they want us to pay them, they got to give us some help. That's easy enough. session then for this other issue. Alexis, yes. I'll, I'll make a motion to uh, enter into executive session for how long, Don? Maybe 15, just... For 15 minutes for the purpose of discussing what? Can you help me here? Um, time clock, <coughs> supervisor, and employee... Usage. Usage, yeah. Okay. For the purpose of time clock, supervisor, employee usage uh, activities. Pursuant to KSA 7543192B. Uh, non elected personnel discussed. That'd be number one non elected personnel yep. to discuss personnel matters of non elected personnel with. Involvement with the commission and the county clerk to reconvene in the commissioner room of the courthouse when concluded. Can I run and get something really quick that I have sure. to grab? And uh, we will recess for several minutes while the clerk goes to the office to retrieve the information. Who seconded that? Sorry. No hurry. I second. I yeah. Did we, did we vote? No. 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 Don, I gotta run to Don wants to run to the office to get some information. First. I vote aye. Okay. Okay. Before we vote, because then we'd have to close the door and get <laughs> let her back in. Not necessarily. <laughs> Was everyone ready for Christmas? You got all my, what you buy me for presents, Cindy, huh? Cat food. Well, there you go. <laughs> I need some of that. We got too many cats. <coughs> that uh, special flavor scent of uh, cat litter didn't really live up to its expectations. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Better check the Sylvia. We have six cats in the house and you can never smell them. Hmm. She has a lot of deodorizer or something, huh? No, she's got a special cat litter that she gets it. That, uh, Tractor supply. Alexis, are you coming back then later on next week? That's my plan. We actually um, we have the funeral services on Saturday, so that's, I extended my stay since that happened that way. Yeah. We've been having nice weather here. It's about 60 today, so it's <coughs> supposed to be, so it's been pretty nice. Well, we have an evening meeting next week, right? Yes. On the 30th at 7.30 in the evening. Okay. 7, yes. 7.30? I believe so. 
It's in the book. Uh, Derek is Derek is currently telling me that he has the hours already, so hopefully he can get those to Dawn. Okay, Dawn's not here again. She went to her office. She'll be okay. back. Okay. Well, I'm I'm talking to him now, so hopefully he'll get those in. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Dawn's okay. back. Uh, Alexis just talked to Derek, Dawn, that he has those hours and will get them into you. Awesome. Today, I hope. Yeah. Okay, we have a motion and second to go into executive session. All in favor say aye. 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 I did already. Well, Jim did already. Motion carried. Not opposed. Yeah. Send it out. Send it out and have every department head sign it and return it. Then there are no excuses for not understanding how the time clock policy and procedure works. And if, we, and if they don't follow it, we're going to have disciplinary action. Okay. So next Monday's meeting is an evening meeting, of course. Um, 7.30. Yes. And I'm assuming should, I haven't really talked to Brendan. Should I tell him that he's not required to come? Do you want him to come? The two things I've already got scheduled is that road vacation hearing and the amended budget hearing. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I, I didn't have anything. But that's besides payroll and accounts payable. It's a short week, and let's not do any more than that and pick them up in January. Okay, and do you want me to put an ad in the paper, or have we said it enough to people that and mentioned it enough in the minutes, or do I need? Do you want me to put an ad in the paper? For the 30th, for the 30th it would, it would evening urgent. meeting? Because yeah, I, I, I think I can in. still get it in. Yeah, you call her, she'll put it in yet. I don't know if we need Brendan here. If he has, if he, yeah. if he has issues, he could call, he can email us. If, and if, if he has an emergency, he could come in that evening. It's a short week. Let's just Alexis, do what we got to uh, do. And also on this meeting, evening meeting is kind of going to be like a forum thing, which I'm not against necessarily, but we should state that when we have our meeting, that's going to be orderly between the commissioners. And then maybe later when we're done, we'll have question and answer period for the people from the crowd and maybe put a time limit on how long someone can yeah, speak. Yeah, we can do, yeah, yeah, we, we can do that. Um, because last time. 7 or 7.30? 7.30. Um, it starts okay. at 7. It does start at 7? Well, that's what I put. Okay. Is that well, okay? That's, that's 7. But, that's but 7.30 would be the um, road vacation hearing and okay. 7.45 uh, amended budget, or I might have those backwards. Okay. Well, well, either but, way, it doesn't matter. But seven is seven. I was, okay. Well, it's, we can just, we can just yeah. open it up to public discussion, but yeah. we'll limit each speaker to maybe like two and a half minutes or something, and and the commission can respond and then go on to the next, you know, they can yeah. wait in line. or Because the last time we had discussion. one, it gets a little out of control, free-for-all thing, and that's not good. Well, people kind of want to start having a discussion amongst themselves, but it defeats the purpose of making the commission respond to each question. So. Right. That's why we give the chairman a gap. Throw it out at somebody. Yeah. Okay, do uh, you have anything else for today, anyone? I do. One more thing. I just want you to be thinking about what you want to do. We have, we're going to do a, reorg a restructuring of the board for the new year for 2020. So if either one of you wants to be chair, um, do some thinking about that and we can discuss it. I just I don't want it to come up as a last minute discussion on January, whatever that date will be, sixth or whatever. Yeah, whatever. I Let's don't see. care. We have the thirtieth and then yes, the January sixth would be our first meeting of the new year where we do a reorganization of the board. So Put some thought into that if either one of you wants to put yourself forward for the chair position. Please. Okay. Okay. Do you have anything else? I don't have anything else. Don? No. Jim? Nope. Okay, well, uh, uh, oh, go ahead. May, maybe let me, since you guys are both new, on the last working day of the month, I will also have all of the resolutions to transfer funds. 
the ones that you will have you know choices at is the road and bridge fund as to where you want um, I'll kind of go over with Brendan where maybe he would like to propose but ultimately that's your guys's decision so those resolutions I'll plug in the dollar amount that I think probably just knowing the things that I know and then we can discuss but um, we'll do normally we do from the health department to capital outlay fund we do uh, the highway department to uh, those two to three options Ridgeland. special funds yes and then we do county general if we can to uh, capital improvement fund to help pay offset some of the expenses that are in that plan um, and the one thing I kind of didn't think and I will make sure I tell Brendan but I you know, he said something about transferring to special bridge, and I said, oh, you can't. Now, those money that are sitting in that special county road improvement fund, that big money, the bridge money that we are exchanging for, you can use the, that money to pay for those bridge projects. You just can't. So we're, because we're doing our fund exchange. It used to be what was called a five-year bridge plan, and, and you would apply for bridge projects, and it would go to the state, and the state handled all the money. Now they're giving you like 80 cents on the dollar or whatever it is to get it. We used the chip seal project or the patching to get our money, our share of the money, but that money is actually supposed to be for bridges, but it doesn't have to be. It can be used for anything, but just so you guys kind of have the idea, and I'll make sure Brendan knows that because I, I feel day, like I misstated last what week What date is that. payroll uh, 31st? Payroll the, is Year's actually Eve. issued on the 31st, but you guys will approve on the 30th. 30th, so we'll we got to, we'll do the cost payable and everything on the 30th, okay. That evening? That evening. So I had originally thought 7 to 7.30, you guys would do your approved minutes, do Maybe. that, do the tra yeah. the resolutions if you want to. And, or, pay, and payroll. Yeah, yeah. then and we the, would do that road vacation hearing, the public, uh, the amended budget, and then, and probably we shouldn't do the amended budget, or we shouldn't do the resolutions until after you approve the amended budgets. Because um, if you wouldn't approve that, we might not have the money to do the resolutions. But And then at that point in time, public comment. But unless you want to do public comment from 7 to 7.30. Uh, we should do that at the let's, end. Let's, let's, have you put, let's have you put payroll and accounts payable before public comment. I think that should be the very last thing. That way, when we decide to cut it off, the meeting can close. Right. Okay. I agree. Okay. Okay. And that's the 30th, next yes. week from today, okay. Yes. That's 7 o'clock. Okay. Yeah. 7 p.m. Okay, anything else? Alexis, Don, Jim, anyone? I don't think so. Okay, well, let's adjourn the meeting then. Everyone have a Merry Christmas. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Yeah, you too, Alexis.